Stop. Sit. <laughs> okay, we're streaming now. And uh, you're gonna see if you got the the YouTube page up, you're gonna see it switch to the black screen. I think it's gonna say Willis Greedia. Oh. Uh oh. It says you're live. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. Commercial. I think I think we're live. Oh yeah, I didn't switch it. So uh, we're gonna do a quick little mic test first, guys, and then we're gonna get rolling. Um, let me know if you guys can hear me. Check one two. Check check. I think you can hear me. Can you hear Levi? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing any uh, any confirmation here. There is a delay. A slight delay. Yeah. That is true. Oh. Can you hear me? Let me know. Can you hear me? It's about it's about time. Let's do this. What's up, everyone? That's what yes. I see. Yes. Okay, hold yes. the highs for a minute. Okay. Yes, um, they're yes. all saying yes. Oh, yes, yes, here, you know, now we're caught up. Okay. They're Lindsay, say something real quick. Real quick. Real quick. All right, cool. Is anybody like Quick, the uh, the chocolate flavored drink? Isn't it called Nesquik now? Nesquik, yes. Oh, I, love I that have stuff. Nesquik in my coffee every single morning. I'm really upset oh, that they don't just... sell them in like the gallon jugs anymore. You can only oh. get them in the gas station bottles now. That's fucked up. Yeah, it really sucks yeah. ass. Sucks ass. Okay, I um, here we go. CP um, and Emily prepared this little intro for us. So let's all. Hey, it's it's for my video. Let, let, let's calm down with the <laughs> us stuff. But uh, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> His body was never recovered from the lake that he drowned. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless. Let me know face. if you guys can hear the audio in the video. The blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. Hundred and eight watching. Wow. Well, I mean, it's no hollow stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. Oh wait, Cody's really depth <laughs> Ever since the 1978 release of Halloween, <clears throat> studios have tried to replicate the formula and success of the John Carpenter classic. The chat Since then, we've gotten three major know. franchises featuring Michael Soon Myers, Jason Voorhees, and Freddy Krueger. All have case. their loyal followers. Mm. While Jason and Probably Freddy me. have taken cues from Michael, <laughs> don't let fans of the Halloween she's got franchise quite the narrator fool you. Michael uh, isn't voice. completely original. Dude, she's got the here. everything voice. Yeah. Good song choice, too. I can't believe what she did in the Exorcist video. <sighs> She's got the, uh, what she's got coming up next. So she's finally Ooh, get to that list. While the franchises so. have all borrowed from one another. And how long it took me to make that stupid? <laughs> uh, I think we better stop. Oh, sideways shit. Stop here, I want to pack a cigarette. I said stop the goddamn car! I want to hey, pack you a got cigarette! One or Tina. Awesome intro, Lee. Awesome intro, oh, Cody. Thanks, guys. I worked really hard. Me and Cody actually video, put this Lee. together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got permission from the other guy to do it. Yeah. <laughs> He's fine. I'm not even in that video. <laughs> either, so great video, Lee and Emily. I know you're out there. Hello? Hello? Oh. Now that we've shown that none of these franchises are wholly original or perfect, you guys are here is talking CP's over ranking of the big three, Sorry. all 31 Wait, films Lee? ranked. Is it frozen on Halloween 5? Stuck. It's stuck. Yeah. It's unstuck. Oh. And she's, she's giving an O face. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. It's unstuck now. Okay, that's it. So I guess uh, we can uh, start this stream now. How's that for professional? <laughs> 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 oh, God. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Scream stream. Your screen should uh, switch over here in just a sec. So, but, uh, If you want to watch the whole thing, it's on my uh, channel sometime soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 31 on the 31st privacy. of December. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When's the next 31st? I guess I'll release it 
But uh, let's say hello to some people in the chat. We got Robert Shaw, The Beast, Juno 2000, Horror Junkie 78, Raiders uh, AK, The Crash King, Renegade Hero. A lot of uh, familiar faces and non familiar faces in the chat. Uh, Lindsay, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderfully, Lee. How are you doing? I feel bad because I, I made you guys late because I didn't have my shit together. So. I, I wasn't ready either, so we're <laughs> Do good. Do you ever? <laughs> Never. It wouldn't be a scream stream if I did have my shit together, right? <laughs> Cody, how are you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. A little bit tired, but I'm not going to say anything because Brian's like halfway in the morning <laughs> yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, we can't so. complain at all. <laughs> CP, how are you feeling? Um, I've learned my lesson. It could be worse, is what I'll say. Okay. It certainly could be worse. It could be better. Good deal. Good deal. <laughs> Last time I said I was good, I w- was in the hospital within five hours. So I'm, yeah. So don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm here talking. That, that's what I am. I'm here talking. Brian, how are you feeling, brother? Uh, good. Yeah. Tired, but it's the same old, same old, isn't it? I, th- I think mm. I think the tiredness helps me to uh, come out of my shell a bit. So Aww. let's go. There's you definitely know, been more swearing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a little bit of uh, swearing out of Brian, which is nice. Um, there was a guy on Twitter that actually watched all four of our um, ranking videos and then went and Stop. averaged all of them. I wish I would have uh, screen capped him. Maybe I'll do that sometime during this or something like that. But yeah, I, I saw that as well. That was pretty cool, uh, actually. He's in the stream right now. Is he? Yeah. What's his What's yeah. his name? He's in the He's in the top the top right corner of my Skype call. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, there was a... That guy. Tom Ferrara says, could imagine if there were a film where the men in Black Machine Guns, Tina and Busta Rhymes' character in Resurrection, could imagine if there were a film where... Men in Black Machine Guns, Tina and Busta Rhymes' characters in Resurrection. I think he's saying if Tina from Five and and Busta Rhymes were in the same Halloween movie. Oh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, sign me up for that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. So, any of you so, gonna... I think he's saying that the Men in Black would machine gun them down. Mm-hmm. Would, hey, would we, we need commas and periods. What? Would you welcome that? Uh, a movie with uh, Buster Rhymes and uh, Tina? I guess Freddie and Tina. No. It better be a fucking YouTube short, otherwise. Oh, you know I like Tina though, so I'm one of the few that will stand up for her. Oh my God! Please get us to that, there. Lee. Yeah. Oh my God, Cody! You talk to me on a daily basis. I'm like the literal like reincarnation of how annoying she is. Uh, <laughs> true, very true. Calm the fuck down. Very on true. So, this is going to be kind of a loose episode because we're going to take CP's list, and he's going to tell us what his number thirty-one through one is, and then we're all going to kind of respond to that and maybe offer our own, you know. Um, uh, God, I am. Fr- Words are hard, so, Lindsay. What's going we're gonna, on? We're gonna smash heads about our lists. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Words. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, work was just brutal today. Okay, I I work in a job where I have like fifteen different things coming at me at once, and they're called airplanes. Yes. Besides <laughs> the airplanes, yeah. and my head was just killing me that I I can't even like think right now. And I got my dog like freaking going crazy right next to me. So, thank you, Doctor Dead. <laughs> thank you, Doctor Dead. Appreciate the the two dollars. Very nice, Nathan Oswald. Thank you. Halloween 2018 twist was not handled well. Oh God, that's a hand grenade getting thrown into the chat. Oh Jesus. Mm. Do, do we want to? Well, feel go that ahead, one? defend it, sir. Go ahead and run away and defend it, Mister <laughs> Best Movie of the Year. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You, you guess, know, yeah. Let's guess, save it, Nathan. We will be talking about Halloween 2018. So. Uh, CP, give me your number thirty-one, and then go around the uh, the stream with uh, Lindsay first, and tell me your can, thoughts. Can you just on... give Levi like a snuggle? I'm gonna go. Or I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go put long... Levi up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, CP. So I was kind of. I'm the only person I think that has this as my thirty-one, and I was kind of surprised by that. Halloween Resurrection is is my least favorite film out of the. Yeah, all these yucky faces. I, I, um. You don't fuck with the bad guy. I mean, granted, Freddy's dead for, for everything that you guys talk about. Thank uh, you. They, they fuck with him. But that's 
that's Robert England. Like that's Freddie fucking with Freddie. It's not, you know, it's not taking away from his character so much as, as the disrespect. Displaying it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, but, but it's done with the actual character. It's, it's not, you there's, know, there's a difference. There's, there's literally minutes in Halloween resurrection where Michael Myers is a joke. There's an entire fucking runtime. Yeah, of I, Freddy's I, dead where Freddy's the joke. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I guess that's why I accept it more. I, 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 I genuinely am curious to have you rewatch it, Freddy's Dead and then tell us that it's not auto, automatically thirty-one. Okay. See, the, the, dif- the difference between what CP's saying is that, like, Michael Myers still remains Michael Myers in Resurrection. Yes, they they talk about with him, but. Freddy is not he doesn't resemble the Freddy that we know yeah. from previous movies. But there's a slow descent into that though. Like he's he's, he's sort of that in five, f- five. No, no, even as, as <laughs> shitty as he is in five and even in parts of four, it is still a gigantic change when you get to Freddy's Dead. And Freddy's yeah. Dead, he is literally a Looney Tunes cartoon. Mm-hmm. I, c- I could not have described it better. That's exactly what I was thinking about the last time I watched it. This is like mm-hmm. Bugs Bunny. This is like right out of Looney Tunes. It's, and their special guest. Well, and they, they purposely Freddy. do that too. It's not like a co- like a coincidence or something like that. Oh, they I know. Purposely and I was purposely scene. pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they put the, the the little thing where he pushes the little spikes, and it's like a whole wild yeah. coyote moment and everything. Yeah. And uh, then you got the guy, yeah, the guy bouncing, uh, uh, b- bouncing through the. We're room. just live. It's fine. It's, yeah. My God. At least trekking a fucking light across the room and knocking shit over. Him. <laughs> <laughs> doing work and I'm all like hey be quiet <laughs> <laughs> you can wait <laughs> so I she it, really should slow it down on those videos though like so I take it CP's easy I'm not making us was, all look bad <laughs> was it Freddy's dead yeah Freddy's dead is 30 for, uh, for me so do all of us agree that Freddy's dead is the worst did anybody not nope. have Freddy's dead I guess you didn't hear me go yeah. on the diatribe but about how I was surprised that I was the only he one. Was, he was dealing with the dodgy. Oh, that's right. You put the dog away. Uh, yeah. I, I said Halloween Resurrection is, is my least favorite. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're the only one that said that. Mm-hmm. I think Halloween Resurrection is easily the best of the worst. My when you talk about favorite. when you talk about Seed of Chucky, when you talk about Freddy's Dead, when you talk about Jason Takes Manhattan, some of us would say Jason X, some of mm-hmm. us would say Jason Goes to Hell. I think Halloween Resurrection is easily the most watchable of any of them. If you're yeah. talking about worst of the worst, but that's just me. Jason X actually gets better for me every single time I watch it. I, Jason X and Jason Goes to Hell are much higher on my list than most yeah. people, so it's, I'm not part of that that camp. But uh, I know Brian's already his, his ass is already puckering at that, so. It's, <laughs> Jason X is a stink bomb. Yeah, <laughs> it's nobody's saying it's a good movie, but yeah. you can either you I, can I don't either, think that you they either enjoy it for how bad it is, or it's just bad and you hate it for yeah. how bad it is. Like that, they if don't you, go into making a in space no. movie and think we're going to take this seriously, guys. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I will like, say this: they I, automatically know it's going to be ridiculous. Don't have to make it look like Power Rangers, though. A really bad episode of Power yeah. Rangers. Good but they're going to make it look like John Wayne in the Wild West. It's, it's, <laughs> it's in space. Crap. It's like, what on earth? It's just, no. No, you know, I, could, I could I could never I could never argue with anybody that hates the movie. It's just I grew up in the generation where I was a teenager when it came out, and I have fun with how horrible it is. Here's so a fun distinction. Jason X is the first feature film completely shot in digital. Mm-hmm. You, oh, yeah. I think you, it's the very first ever, like, any movie? It's the first... Um, Major release. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Movie. That's a pr- that's yeah. a pretty big claim. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I mean, I mean if hey, you want to go in the record books, it's, it's in the record books, <laughs> and you can't really like trump it. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, CP, what's your number thirty? My number thirty was Freddy's Dead. Freddy's Dead. Freddy's. Dead. So. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I get. I, I've caught up now. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, the average, the average of everybody's thirty-one is Freddy's Dead. Thirty is Halloween Resurrection. Okay. Mm. Um, I'm gonna read a couple here from the chat. Yeah, I'm gonna let the chat get involved in this stream. This is gonna be fun because when the last, I think the last Hollow stream we did, somebody was like pissed off that we we weren't acknowledging the chat. And oh, I said, yeah. one of, the one of the four hundred plus. Were, yeah. Yeah. So. Hey, we got we got two hundred and seven right now, so we're doing we're doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody uh, somebody mentioned above Texas Chainsaw: The Next Generation, and that would definitely be towards the end. But I would still just for the joy of watching how ridiculous 
um, Matthew, Matthew McConaughey, McConaughey is, I would still watch that before ooh, that first ooh, day. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> by this much, by this much, I would still give it at the edge. Hey, can, hey, do you know the story of how he got that part? Yeah, I watched the interview, and it was cool that he actually kind of was yeah. like having fun talking about it. He didn't like. I wasn't in that movie. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm an Oscar winner now. Yeah, was, well, he, because he was, was cool. he was like literally leaving town. I guess, and then he like mm. stopped off and and uh, talked to Kim Hinkle, who was hiring somebody. He was looking for somebody for that part, and Matthew McConaughey wasn't even like in you know thinking about it. And then he was like, you know what? Fuck it, I'll try out for it. And then he ended up getting the part. So it was kind of crazy. I thought that he was of- actually reading for one of the other parts. Like I think he was reading for one of the the um, the teenagers or something like that. And then he got out and he got into his truck and said, you know what? Wait a minute. And he went back in and said, I think yeah, I'd rather I play think, this dude. I th- well, yeah, I think cool when he got in the room, too, Kim Hinkle was like, okay, your audition is I want you to scare the shit out of my assistant right there. It's not like some girl that he'd never even met. And so that was his audition is he had to – and he's, I think he said he, like, pushed her against the wall and just started, mm-hmm. like, screaming right in her face or something like that. And then <laughs> – so he gave him the part. <laughs> But you know, feet to the fire, I guess. Yeah. Um, stop. What's Gord- up, CP? Joseph Joseph Gordon Levitt's character in H two O was w- worse than Tina and Ben Busta Rhymes combined. But that's just me. Yeah, oh, I don't. God. I don't Getting a little crazy with the stick. Mm. No, it's yeah, I kind of yeah. liked him. In oh, I loved that, him. Though. He was great. I thought he's one of my favorite parts of H two O. Yeah, I always yeah. loved that intro. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. And this is coming from somebody like I couldn't watch that third Rock from the Sun show because I couldn't stand watching him on that show. Yeah, I so. wasn't a big fan of that show either. Uh, I never Holy it. Christ, everybody. My YouTube channel is <laughs> W-I-L-I-S-C-R-E-D-I-A. I'm in the chat when, when you have an arrow with the blue name. That's, <laughs> that's me. That's my YouTube Why channel. Why don't you go ahead and type something in the chat now, motherfucker? Yeah, so <laughs> blah. I just typed blah. I have a little wrench next to my name. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Sean my- in the movie CP, uh, he said he gave Halloween 2018 a four out of five. That's all he's saying though. He won't really expound on that. So it's in my top ten. Yeah, there you go. That's all you'll on get though. List. You're not going to get any more than that. So just <clears throat> be happy that you got that. That's all. I can uh, yeah, say. no, I'm sorry. Three point four and uh, <laughs> absolute <bugs. laughs> By the day, it goes down point one. <laughs> Three point four. Uh, otherwise, no two weeks zero. from now he'll be like, "Fuck yeah. this movie." He'll turn into Cody Leach. That's right. <laughs> my thirty, my number thirty was actually Jason Takes Manhattan. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's my. Least I mean, it's it, you're kind of you're you're splitting hairs with the bottom four, but like it's it. Jason Takes Manhattan for me was a couple of cool like moments like the decapitation kill when he's stuffing the dude into the barrel but like all the weird shit about him melting and turning into a kid the characters the what an hour and 15 minutes on a fucking boat and everything is it's it's the it's the only friday the 13th movie that i had absolutely no desire to ever rewatch. Which I probably yeah. still will. It's anyway. it's one of the few Friday movies that's like you can almost look at every single scene. Like you could throw a dart at any scene in that movie and find something really fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> that's and mm-hmm. I think it's the only one. Like Jason goes to hell. There's some really cool sequences in that movie, actually. You know, Jason as, X. There's some fun to be had in that movie, but not Manhattan for me. Mm-mm. As well. a New Yorker, I'd like to ask anybody who has a map how a lake is connected to any body of water that somehow gets to Manhattan. Yeah. That's just but my thing. I, I <laughs> broke it down, actually. Did you really? Yeah, I did. There was Somebody had posted something on, a, I think it was in Killer Flicks. Yeah. And I, I posted, that? like, there's, like, a couple of lakes that would be around where the camp is supposed to be. Oh shit. And yeah, but a those lake there's a couple of them where there are canals <laughs> to oh, wow. hey, rivers. It into- still sucks. It Thank you for doing the homework <laughs> that the riders never bothered to yeah. fucking do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> CP as a New Yorker, you're wrong. I'm well, just saying, I, I, I don't know Georgia. if you can get one of those size yeah, one of those size boats can get through a fucking ravine or any any <laughs> shit like well, that. Well, it could be like it probably looks like they fucking Dawson's Creek for all, all I know. Okay. Yeah. But all I'm saying is that there is a body of water <laughs> that goes through there. 
What are you looking for? We're also talking about the probability of the visit, child. Yes. I Sorry. do like the guitar kill, it though. It doesn't save it from being a crap film. Let's just... Yeah. Right. You know. Whatever you guys have to say. Make, yeah. it, make you feel better. <laughs> we all said it's a crap film. Oh, we're saying it all. <laughs> <laughs> we all know what I say about you, Cody. Uh-oh. Yes. Uh-oh. We know. Oh, holding back. Brian, know. Brian, say what, what Lindsay normally says to Cody. <laughs> oh. Oh uh, yeah, he won't. Not that tired. He's not, not that, that tired. tired. It's in our contract. He can't say. Bless it. you, Cody Lee. Bless, <laughs> Bless you. you. <laughs> you can go to hell, hell, hell. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Young Guns too. I w- my my least favorite Jason is actually Jason X. What? Yeah. Oh, I'm with you on that. That was my Jason that was my goes number to hell. thirty-one in my list. Damn. Was it 31 for you, bro? That was my, that was my 31, Jason goes to hell. Uh, not Jason goes to hell, uh, Jason X. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, you know, why? Just why? Mm. They well, waste- One good kill, that's it. That's all the movie has. One good kill and everything else around it is absolute turd. <laughs> There's a couple good kills. There's a couple. Which, which I like one? The, drill. the drill kill is pretty cool. No. The drill, the drill kill. I, uh, everybody knows the fucking the, the frozen face. Yeah. I like the callback to the sleeping bag kill. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the one's funny yeah, where they like he kills. he like he's frozen and he breaks loose and chops the fucking dude's arm off. Like it's not a kill, but there's some fun moments. I'm not gonna try to change Brian's mind though. I know that's futile. Which I figure <laughs> I only f- like noticed this in rewatching the Halloween franchise. Uh, the frozen face kill is a uh, a temperature opposite of the the hot tub That's kill a, in yeah. Halloween too. Yeah. <laughs> oh my I, I god! Shot, I never shot, noticed. Mind, I never thought about mind that. blown. <laughs> yeah, dude. It, it like the the close up of of them pulling the dirt girl out of the water. Yeah. It's, it's literally a right reverse. Halloween, Halloween did it first, just in reverse. Can it? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get my whole video out. There's just yeah. a, that shit in it. See, I, I don't get people caught like the beast in the chat says the sleeping bag scene in Jason X alone brings it above Jason goes to hell. Jason so what he's Sarah. saying is repeating repeating a scene that was already done and done better in a previous film. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say that either. It's just it's but like, you know what? I think Jason X knows what it is. You know, like, it, yeah. even down to the score, it's got this really silly B movie ish like uh, like a TV movie of the week score. It's just. They know what it is, you know. It's it's metal. a sci-fi movie of the week. Yeah, it's a oh, sci-fi yeah. movie of the week. That's oh, what yeah. it is for sure. It's a it's a Star Trek episode. It's, with it's Jason. fucking Sharknado. We're aware, <laughs> we're aware what it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sharknado. You got the chick with the. Does she have um, the robot chick now? Does she have three breasts? I can't. Remember no, she that. had two, but her nipples wouldn't stay on. That's it. The they kept falling nipples. off. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, people. That's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> People's nipples are falling off. It'll be anarchy. <laughs> uh, so the average twenty nine is Jason goes to Manhattan. Uh, Jason takes Manhattan. I don't know why I put Jason goes. Yeah. Manhattan. <laughs> Idiot. Well, he, he um, went to hell yeah. after he went to Manhattan. Because the whole 20- film is about him going to Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's it. Twenty eight is Halloween five. I think that's that's what my number is too. The average for us twenty eight yeah. is Halloween five, which. Yeah, it was yeah. my 26, so pretty close. Oh, 29 wow. for me. Yeah, Halloween it's, it's 5, not... I think, has a lot of potential. I think they should have waited a year. I think they should have mm-hmm. ironed out that script, uh, and it could have been a kick-ass movie, I think. And guess what? All the stars are aligning for them to make the same mistake with Halloween yeah. 20. <laughs> I hope to God they every don't. Every single thing they're talking about is exactly what they did with <laughs> Halloween 5. <laughs> Wow, success! Sequel already is, written. We're as not much as I love back. the We're Halloween franchise, the back. let's get this shit made. I don't think I want the next movie to come out in 2019. No, I don't. I, 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 I barely want it to come out in 2020. Yeah. I'll take 2020, but 19, I think, is just a little bit too. F- and you know what? We could both be wrong, and it could come out, and it could be freaking awesome. And you know, but it could it could it could I mean, the, first, the first four Friday movie or no, the first like what six? Yeah. Friday movies were like every other year, every single year, something but like that, wasn't it? How many yeah, franchises one, two, three, though four, come out five, in succession six. every year and are are good? That you know they're yeah. good every single year. Can you name so, one? It is. 
saw a tribe. Not, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's my point. Uh, saw yeah. paranormal activity, but these are all Blumhouse. That was the thing I was afraid of. Is oh, saw yeah. oh. paranormal activity, the fucking purge, everything's all right. Sequel, Shots sequel, 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 sequel. <laughs> but yeah, I had Halloween Five and Halloween Resurrection right next to each other, but I still give the the very slight razor's edge to Halloween Resurrection, just because I think it's the things that Halloween Five does to me are are much more egregious, with just shitting all over Halloween Four. I yeah, you know, I think if you if you somehow are able to watch just Halloween Five and 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 unremember Halloween Four, it's it's a little less yeah painful but like the fact that they just totally say yeah forget everything it, we just is yeah. halloween five rocky five yes yes it is it's that rocky five it, it's it's a hodgepodge of decent scenes and then like what the fuck scenes and why why is she a mute this fucking yeah oh <laughs> oh and what like see this is this is a spoiler the, the mask is horrendous yeah. michael oh. and tina should have fought in the street at the end of halloween five so this is a spoiler for my video, but I have a thing where I go on about how Loomis is like super creepy in five. He, yeah. He's like in everybody's personal space and he's all kind of touchy. It, it's like Loomis is really he's, fucking weird in that movie. He's got a yeah, good line in there, though. He's at kids. Yeah. He's, he's like grabbing them in, in yeah. inappropriate spots. It's just, well, it's just really funky. Daniel Harris said his his uh, breath smelled like alcohol pretty much throughout the whole shoot. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> sad that a, a what was he like eight years old when that movie came out? It's sad that an eight year old knows what alcohol breath smells like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amstel says Halloween Five is the Rocky Balboa of Halloween movies. Wrong, sir. What? You are wrong. You Whoa, are wrong. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, there's so much wrong about that sentence. I don't yeah, even know where to begin. Jesus, that's Halloween Five is easily the Fifty Shades freed of. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, because the first one's so good. <laughs> um, I, I I cringe when I even think of this line that he says in the first Fifty Shades of Grey. He says, "I don't make love, I fuck." <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, oh, hard. Sorry. If you were mine, your ass wouldn't be. You wouldn't be able to sit right for a week or something like that. Just, just Ugh. really. Does he cringy. say that? Yes. <laughs> if you were if you were mine, you wouldn't be able to sit right for a week. Just, oh my god! You know, I thought that was you know the line. You know the director of Halloween Five got kicked off The Omen Four. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. He did. A TV movie. Yeah. Uh, D- uh, Dominic. Dominic Othin and Gerard. Uh, Dominic Othin and Gerard. Yeah, he he was apparently getting all uh, Kubrickian on The o- Omen Four. And he was taking like twenty years to do one shot and just getting it right. So the producer just came on and said, "You're not Get rid Stanley of that Kubrick guy right now." He's like, "Dude, our budget's twenty thousand. Let's go." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had that on VHS actually. Omen Four. I, I've never watched it. I've never seen any of the sequels. I've only seen the original yeah. and the remake. I've seen the first. They one, get I think. progressively <laughs> worse. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They're no psycho. No, they're not. <laughs> they're not. They're not. Yes, Red Danger. That is an actual line from. Fifty Shades of Grey. I was not making that. I'm up. impressed that two of us actually could quote Fifty Shades. Of Grey. I know. I, I'm ashamed. And it's, it's, not, the and it's girl. not Lindsay, and it's not. Yeah, it's not the girl. Yeah. No, yeah. it's the guy. It's <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Or maybe he's talking about CP. CP was that an actual line? Yeah. If you were, if you were mine, you, you wouldn't be able to sit right for a week. <laughs> if some variation of that is from the first Fifty Shades. I remember, like, Straight watching up, the- CP. How many times have you watched it? I know. Well. When I was married the first time, only uh, when he irons. My ex was a reader, and let's just say I had to watch those movies on opening night. Oh, that's oh. a harsh. And holy fuck, did I not like it? <laughs> yeah, so uh, that was that was a, a product of my uh, my, well, you know, my was, mistaken past. <laughs> the one nice thing about you know those uh, young adults is that uh, everybody has a celebration when the final movie gets released in theaters because mm-hmm. you know it's over. Kind of like yeah. what they did with the Twilight. Yeah, that's that's how I was with well, it's Twilight. They kind of cocktoos you too with, with that with that crazy ending. That's that's all a dream. I didn't even like, catch the last movie for Twilight. Well, hey CP, you gonna go ahead and get rid of Life Sucks if you don't mind. Oh, uh, let me find Life Sucks. No offense, bye. Color. <laughs> no offense. Go I didn't fuck even yourself. see that. I didn't. I don't. Oh. I still don't see it. Yep. It says, no offense, I think the stream should be Cody Lee and CP. Oh, fuck you, dude. 
Yeah. But uh, keeping with the theme, let's see. Uh, uh, I don't have the master list right here, but my twenty-seven was Dream Child. Yep. Yep. That was mine too. I um I actually liked Dream Child the last time I watched it. Like it, it was one of those experiences where I went into it thinking I saw this when it first came out and I hated it. So this is going to be painful that I'm watching this because I got to review it. And I came out the other side like, wow, that was actually kind of fun. It's bonker. It's it's kind of like what uh, Next Generation is for me, I guess. With uh, but better. I think it's better structured than Next Generation. But uh, I um, there's two things that I really like about Dream Child. I like the angle they go for where Amanda Kruger is kind of coming back to stop him, and I absolutely love. The motorcycle kill. Yeah, Everything that's, else, that's one of the I best hate. kills of the franchise. Yeah, it is. Everything else, I hate. Yeah, I, 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 I just totally disagree on uh, Nightmare Elm Street Five because I, I just like for me, I think the story moves a lot better than Part Four. Like Part oh, Four, I mean, mm-hmm. much, yeah. much better kills. Like if you could take the kills from Part Four and put them into the story of part five, I think you'd have an almost perfect friend hmm. film. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I won't dispute that. Part four really doesn't have a story because they didn't really have a script. It was just, uh, it was Rennie Harlan saying, okay, how are we going to make a cool scene here? Yeah. And this, well, it's, 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 it's a right it's, strike at the time, weren't they? Yeah. So it's just, but it really shows. And for me, like, story and character kind of outweigh the other stuff and... I, I don't just I don't want just a collection of scenes that don't actually make much sense when they're together, um, mm-hmm. regardless of how cool they might look. And part four does look pretty cool, but for me, five takes takes the edge over it just because it's got a story that's for me is worth following. So, I think one yeah. thing I liked is that they kind of delved into Amanda Kruger a little bit. Um, yeah, I always found that interesting that uh, Freddie's mother was a nun. Wasn't there another character that their mother was a nun? Oh, uh, Daredevil. Yeah, Daredevil's mother's a nun. Mm-hmm. Maybe they got together and had birthday parties or something. <laughs> <laughs> that what no, what no, Daredevil we and Freddy. <laughs> We're on a 26. Uh, the, the average for us for 27 is Jason X. Mm. Oh, my, okay. my number 26 is the original Friday the 13th. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Like, <laughs> you got us. Brian, you get out. <laughs> my <laughs> God. God. So my balls. I want you to kiss no your offense, own ass but right this, now. This stream would be great if it was everybody but Brian. I know. <laughs> right now, you're right, CP. I'll leave with you, the Brian. The fucking yeah. original. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, CP. Yeah. Hi. Kiss my asshole. <laughs> 26, the original Friday. The yeah. movie was groundbreaking for what it was. Yeah, it copied What's Halloween. The balls? But Don't give me that crap. Still, it was. Breaking. What new it ground appealed, did it, it break? To the gore uh, let me t- let me answer, let me answer that question. Killer. And I'm the Halloween guy, but let me answer that question. Halloween kicked the doors open for the, and it's still known as the slasher. You know, the birth of the slasher was, or not the birth, <laughs> Christmas. but it was Psycho. responsible for the slasher oh, craze. But <laughs> as soon as Friday the Thirteenth came out, the movie made thirty nine million dollars in nineteen eighty. And it was like it, it was kind of like a one-two punch: Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth, and then after Friday the Thirteenth, because of Tom Savini's kills and all that, then they were like, "Oh shit, we we can make these movies for next to nothing." And let's and so they were churning out like three or four of them a year after that, up until 1984, which was considered like the end of the golden era of slashers. But Friday the Thirteenth is is like a major player in that. So you're wrong, Brian. Ooh, <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't um, use the not, term. I wouldn't use the term groundbreaking. I would say it's definitely a very important yeah. movie for hit horror history yeah, for sure. in the direction that horror took. Because, yeah, Halloween kind of kicked open the door, like you said. Like I think I said in my review of Friday the 13th, Halloween kicked open the door, Friday the 13th tore the door off the hinge. Exactly. And that's because Friday the 13th introduced all the gore and it appealed to all the nastier side of everything. So then you had the cerebral shit and you had the gore. And then... Um, yeah, then there you go. But yeah, it, there's Betsy Palmer got a car. Broke no so. new ground. I'm sorry, but when you talk it, about the way the the film's done, it broke no new ground. It didn't do anything that other slasher wait, films hadn't all already. Right, so, so wait, we're we're at 26. So you're telling me uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street 2010 broke ground that that Friday the 13th didn't? Uh, 
it's Rob it's not Zombie's about Halloween. Down. It's about making a film that's actually decent. Oh. Friday the Thirteenth is not decent. <gasps> Sorry for the money it's made. You've got a killer. You've got a killer who hasn't even been seen at all throughout the entire film. He's introduced to us in like the last fifteen minutes. Splurges okay. all the backstory, and it's like. Who is this woman? She comes from nowhere. And then it's like we're supposed to buy into her big story and reasons for why we're doing it. It's it's painted as a who done it, but with a who done it, you should know at the start all the possible people who it could be. Oh, you don't you don't set up a bunch no. of people of who it could be and then they, and throw in someone into the works like right in the final reel. That's not a who done it. They give you some exposition in the beginning as to what Bam. why the the camp is cursed because because two kids were killed and the fires were set you, and then in the third act you find out oh this was the woman that that killed those two kids and set those we've fires we've never and, seen before never been told she's still alive she's not even I mean, if, on the if periphery they didn't follow the formula that you just laid out that you're supposed to give these things at the beginning and like your red herrings or the options or whatever. The characters. For the killer's no, be. What I said but is you're supposed if, to know the characters. If they changed that, though, wouldn't that be ground breaking? <laughs> no. <laughs> wouldn't because it's not something ground that to break? It's, it's not. <laughs> screen writing. Look, look, putting well, I mean, cheap, it, they changed putting, things, putting, right? They putting, did something new. Uh, the Horror it's Junkie did bring up Psycho. Writing. They did kind of it's copy Psycho. It's also called lazy filmmaking when you have scenes and scenes upon scenes in which people do stuff for like 10 minutes longer than they need to because they realize they've got to fill out what is essentially a 30-minute script into a 90-minute movie. Right, so uh, they pad stuff out. Are we talking Pop about Halloween 2018 now? <laughs> oh, wow, uh, Brian! I'll, I'll give you that. That Friday the Thirteenth isn't isn't Lindsay go revolutionary by any stretch, but compared <laughs> to the other stuff that we're talking about, it it's it's a bit better a film. And, and you have to consider the fact that it was made for nothing. nothing. They, they didn't put any Halloween money. Halloween was made for nothing. That is a complete BS excuse. Halloween was made for peanuts. And they and they made a classic, an absolute classic. Oh, the I'm best not saying on Friday is near the level of, of Halloween. List. Halloween's a much better film, but yeah, you're talking about Sean Cunningham and John Carpenter here. There, there's there's <laughs> a bit of a difference <laughs> a bit. between the two guys we're talking about. What I love is that Sean Cunningham called Victor Miller and said, "Hey, Halloween's making a lot of money. Let's rip it yeah. off." That's an exact yeah. line from yeah. him. Isn't that great? <laughs> and still to this day, Sean Cunningham will not even mention the H word. Like yeah. he, he's like, yeah. there's something about Halloween that he hates so much that he he won't give it credit, which is the weirdest. It's like, thing. <laughs> it's like the Megadeth and Metallica thing. It is. Like they're always yeah. pissed because Mas <laughs> they're always. He's Dave Mustaine. Metallica. You know, we came out with this kick-ass album, and three weeks later, Black Album comes out. And we're like, fuck, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, it I'm turns not into saying Richard that it's, Brake. A, it's a brilliant film, Brian. But in comparison yeah, no. to the other stuff we're talking about, I, I don't know. I don't know how yeah. it's that. that it's low. it's, it's even 26. at number twelve for me. It doesn't even break the top ten mm. for me. But well, I still, I think it's better than a lot of I other movies it. that you <laughs> haven't read. What, what, I have it. It's, it's a badly made film. Period. That's like, <laughs> just, I'm sorry, but say, say, oh, it broke new ground. Never because seen balls of this it, magnitude the, before. The, the producers were intelligent enough to think, you know what? We can cash, on, cash in on this bollocks. People want to see loads of death on screen and tits. Let's do it for really cheap. And the film will look really <clears> cheap because it is really cheap. It'll be badly acted, badly produced, badly paced, badly scripted, that terrible dialogue. But hey, we've got really great kills going for us, and that's what the crowd want. That's about as far as it goes with regards to the talent involved in making that film. And it's 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 just quite shocking, really, that a franchise ever came out of it. Um, How do you this really is, this feel? Is, this is do we think the burning is better than Friday the Thirteenth? Uh, no, the Beast brought that no. up. You don't uh, think the burning's better better than Friday the Thirteenth? Uh, no, I think it is actually. There, I like the kills better. Uh, uh, there, there's parts of it that's better. There's parts of it that's better. I think Friday's a little bit more rewatchable for me than the burning. But this is kind of along that same lines. You don't have to go into uh, elaborate too much, Brian. But what is your thoughts on Sleepaway Camp? Have you seen the first one? I've not seen it. I've not. Okay. Oh. Yeah, go back to that. And then Are tell you me serious? How, how 
terrible Friday the Thirteenth. I actually, <laughs> I, I would want. I think Sleepaway Camp's way better than the first Friday. I have the first Friday. I agree, Cody. Cody, you can. Yeah, leave. it's because it's that's so much my, fun, though. Well, yeah, I, I can watch I, Sleepaway I was, Camp once a month and be happy. Because yeah, the, the I, Friday, it, it's hard. It's Friday about is, ending. <laughs> There's not a whole lot that Brian's saying that I can dispute, and I'm not the guy trying to defend Friday in the first place. But there's it's it's it saying that the kills are pretty much the thing that made it a classic. There's a lot of classic slashers that that's kind of true for. And I was thinking, I was trying to think, okay, Sleepaway Camp's got a lot wrong with it, but if you're along for the ride, it's a blast. And you brought up the burning that the one of the probably most forgettable killers ever. Cropsy. But there's some really great kills. And I agree with that. I think that's why yeah. we didn't get a sequel to The Burning because I don't think Cropsy can hold a franchise. No, 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 no. Not at all. Yeah. It, I it, saw it, Black it, Christmas fairly recently and that beats the crap oh, yeah. out of Friday the 13th. Oh, oh, oh I agree yes. with that. Yeah, I, yeah Black I Christmas is one of my favorite that. movies. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah that. Except for yeah. <laughs> No, no, I, I wouldn't argue that. It's, it's just when you look at these franchises and, and the stuff that Brian has ahead of Friday the 13th, it's just... Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, because I can of, argue my case. That's why. Oh I, yeah, yeah. I can. You did. Okay. You did. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Cheap yeah. tits. Cheap yeah. tits on Friday the Thirteenth, but a new beginning. It's it's that's that's a masterpiece <laughs> in <the> cinema. <laughs> a new beginning at least attempts something with a story. It's oh. just. <laughs> It's the same fucking story. It's, if somebody gets wronged and they, they they're, they're posing as a killer, it's yeah. literally the fucking paint by numbers Friday the Thirteenth Part One. And we and we and it addresses the mistakes made in the first one, which is that we actually get introduced to this character who's going to be. The oh killer. yeah. Oh yeah. look, remember that ambulance driver? It. Because holy shit, he's the fucking killer, and I'm totally invested. <laughs> Not to mention, it also has the. Uh, the, the what they've built up already in the franchise with James, <laughs> which you wouldn't have it. without part one. Just so what? Just because you <laughs> so you, you, you have it without part one, so that instantly makes part one a classic. Well, no, you can't say part that the that stuff that, that you love movies. in the majority of those other later films is born out of Friday part two, three, and four anyway, which okay. is when Jason mm -hmm. came into it. So suck an egg. You <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! They literally you copy go, the go. fucking storyline from one. It's it's a dude who, who's killing people because his kid is killed. Except it's a guy this time. <laughs> hey, Simon Moon brings up a good point about he says, oh. Black Christmas may, might be his favorite slasher besides Halloween, uh, and it brings up a good question. Like, do you, I think Billy is like one of the most underrated killers ever, uh, and just because they never show his face in the original. I think he's almost as effective as Myers is, and that might be a controversial statement. But um, I wouldn't say it's totally different. I mean, it's just it's the creepiness and the eeriness of the mystery of what the fuck is this thing in the, the upstairs. Yeah. You know, all we ever get to see is the eye. Yeah, they, and, you know, they and, both and, capture and, creepy in completely different ways, but they both work so well. It's the it's the voice in the on the phone and the noises. It like goes back to Zodiac, like just the the yeah. disturbing sounds that's kind of getting played out there. What is this guy's motive? Is he trying to get everybody? And then, the, especially the scene whenever she sees the eye and hauls ass, and all you see is just a hand fucking grab. Oh for yeah, it's, like, that's. Per I mean, Bob Clark did such a great job directing that movie. Yeah, that's one of those movies where like less is absolutely more. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do that, you know. I think Carpenter is one of the few that could really handle tension so well. Bob Clark did it as good, maybe even better. I mean, he, with maybe he got lucky with that movie. You know, because the guy went went on to do like Porky's, and you know he, he yeah. just jumped all over the place. But man, what a master at horror he was! It was crazy. Mm -hmm. I wish he would have done more horror. Movies. I know he did a couple, but I yeah. would just like to point out to CP as well that oh boy, I oh boy. only put when you're talking Friday the Thirteenth films, just Friday the Thirteenth films. I only put Friday the Thirteenth Part Five right above that first Friday the Thirteenth film. Mm -hmm. You are forgiven. So, you're talking like literally. There's no distinction between the two. They're both. Well, then you could have had Friday the Thirteenth Part One above it then. No, because the only reason the only reason Friday the Thirteenth Part Five wins out is because it's more entertaining. Because it moves along at a faster pace, has more more of the stuff in it that you come oh, to the dead. franchise for. We're gonna have to do a Christmas horror stream like for like December. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh oh, are you guys still there? Hold on. Join. 
All right, so where were we? What happened? What? Oh, okay. I had to call I you guys. I don't even remember which number we're on, but I, I we're so back. far off track. Fair no, we're not off track. No. That is exactly what was supposed to happen. That is exactly <laughs> why the stream exists. Right fucking there. This is a fun uh, That's why those videos exist. I, I didn't expect this to get this heated. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Oh, we're fine. We're fine. I'm <laughs> I fucking knew it was all the talk that we had about We haven't even gotten to Halloween 2018 yet. I might oh. jump out a window by the time we get there. <laughs> uh, so, so the average 26 is Friday the 13th, part five, a uh, new beginning. A ironically lot of, a lot of fun to talk about roy i think is uh, you know you can pretty much call it a jason movie he's just his name's roy instead of jason but it's still a guy <laughs> in a hockey mask aesthetically <laughs> aesthetically the movie is exactly the same as the first four really to a degree is. not quality wise but just the approach good, good kills really good kills yeah apparently uh, everyone but lee is frozen right now uh oh hold on let me, let me check my OBS. I've got here. like four or five chins. It's. <laughs> I love the way Cody's frozen. <laughs> Ooh, baby. I think he's singing. I think he's singing Ooh, baby. Singing. At that moment. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Um, hold on just a sec. Let it go. <laughs> oh, wrong frozen. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to. Let me see if I switch screens here and then go back. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Get you guys back. Yeah, because I'm still moving. <laughs> Lindsay's got her ew face. Mm hmm. So I'm going to hit. Brian. Oh, fuck. You never Ooh, realize okay, how much I... you use that area. Yeah. Until... We might be yeah. Hold on. We might be live, guys. Hold on just a sec. Let me see. Oh. Yeah, I think we're coming back. And then he said, if you want me to swallow that, it's going to be $10 extra. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was just... I think we're back. I stretched your face a little bit, CP. Oh, it's I hope you. that's okay. <laughs> yeah, He's just better. a little bloated. Just a, yeah, CP, are, are you okay, buddy? <laughs> Post-op, it's fine. It's, a, it's normal. It's all that saline. Yeah. My audio is robotic. Oh, oh, I know. I know what it is. Hold on. I forgot to turn your... I got to turn that volume down. Hold on. We were doing great for like six weeks. And, yep. then... <laughs> and then... Well, at the least... Pocket. at least. Well, you know, Brian it's like the, the technology stuff. keeps updating, and then I have to update with it, and it's like all mm. growing pains every single time. Yeah. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So, oh, everybody's <laughs> echoing, echoing. No, echo, th that's just a delay. Echo, they shouldn't echo, be now. Echo, echo. They should. They should be good now. So <clears throat> let me double check in here. But let us know in the chat as soon as we stop. Yeah, echoing. Echo should be gone. <laughs> CP's epic voice guy. What? You know who Epic Voice Guy is, don't you? Do I? Yeah, the um, uh, trailers. Uh, what, what do you call them again? Honest Trailers. Oh, that's him. Epic Voice oh, okay. Guy. Yeah, see, no echo. No echo. Okay. Uh, um, what number were we on? Uh, we were just talking about 26. and yeah, uh, you're not even close. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's speed it up a bit, guys. Okay, okay. okay. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, don't even go there, Friday the 13th, boy. Hey, <laughs> just... if we only get <laughs> halfway, we can chop it and then like do the, the stream next week to do the other half. Who knows? I think we'll start speeding up pretty. But right, a, lot so, of these, a lot of these aren't going to be up for much debate. So, so let me read the, the, was the big one. I'll read the average here. The 25 is Jason Goes to Hell. Okay. Which, which we've kind of all kind of shat I think, on our I think only me and Brian kept that out of 30. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that, that's, that's much higher for me and Cody. We wouldn't have it down there. You mean lower? You mean I lower. have it at 22. I have it oh, at 19. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think it's 21 for me. It, it's, no more echoing, so we're good. Uh, 24 is Dream Child, which kind of alluded to. Yeah, we talked about Dream Child a little bit. Yeah. That was 27 for me. Mm. Me too. Uh, 23 is The New Blood, which is uh, Jason versus uh, Carrie. Yeah. I had that at 25. I had that at 28. Uh, I don't even Not know my fan. list in front of me. I don't even know. I, I know I had that one kind of high, but the kills are really lame. And uh, yeah, and you know what? It's one of those things where the MPAA fucked that movie yep. ever. Mm -hmm. Because if you look, it's just like the, the kills in Dream Child. There's so much better when you watch the uncut ones. And that movie really needs awesome kills to survive because the characters are fucking horrendous. Mm -hmm. That doctor, like that whole, that uh, whole, oh that whole party going on next door to Tina's house and all those fucking 
cannon fodder characters. Like that's the the first movie where they're like almost insufferable for me. And then you get to the, the you know they get the Kane Hodder introduction, which I think is the coolest one of the coolest looking Jasons. But you mm-hmm. know everybody knows my thoughts on Kane Hodder. Nothing but respect for the guy, but I don't think he really reinvented the wheel with his Jason. Preach. Um, but he uh, added the, breathing. Yeah, Ooh. those those kills, cutaways in a Friday the Thirteenth movie. Fuck you. Mm. Moving on. Uh, Lee, you didn't do that thing with with. I, d- I just did. Oh okay. Yeah okay. The ranch. Uh, so uh, 22 is the Dream Master, which I thought was way better than when I rewatched it, and I was like, "Oh no, this is this is not that good." <laughs> <laughs> I have it at sixteen, and I I would fully admit, and I think I say it in my video, there's a lot of nostalgia power in that yeah. number because that was my favorite. <laughs> As a kid, for a long time, because it's the MTV, yeah, that's what you know, I was flashy, say, MTV flashy movie. Freddy, mm-hmm. and and uh, yeah, watching it as an invasion. adult, yes, watching it as an adult, I have a lot of bones to pick with Dream Master because you know some people say Dream Warriors was the beginning of the end. I say Dream Master was. Who um, says Dream Warriors the beginning of the end? Cody Archer. Yeah, Cody Archer he, said he that. Swears what? up and down. Yeah. We've had well, a couple, he quite does a few. have a point, even though I still love Dream Warriors. It's a great movie, no. but I, I get what he's trying to say. It, it is the beginning of the comedy Freddy. But they did but it they right nail it. in that movie. But they nail it. They nail we'll, it. We'll, yeah. yeah, they do. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, Dream Master. It, it's it, it's tough to watch as an adult because there's still things that I love about it, but it's certainly like. The Freddy there is like the beginning of the okay, Robert, sit down, Freddy. <laughs> um, what it does have some pretty interesting kills though in Dream Master. Oh yeah, yeah, the kill scenes for sure. I like when they get lost. That's in four. I, right? I love the the junkyard scene too. Yeah, um, at the beginning uh, mm-hmm. where they kill where the dog but kisses. I hate the, yeah, but I, it, it, another thing that kills me too is that even though it's par for the course with slashers, I hate that they fucking they wipe out the Dream Warriors characters in the first yeah. ten minutes. Especially you know, like that. Go Kincaid ahead. Kincaid is one of the greatest characters throughout the, the franchise. I absolutely yeah. loved Kincaid. Me too. Oh yeah, so yeah. Kincaid's awesome. Doing that, like it was just that didn't help them. And let's not forget much. the let's not forget the dollar store version of Kristen that we get with Tuesday Night. Yeah. You know, she, 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 we get a good song out of her, but that's about it. Oh yeah, mm. for sure. Yeah, I got that song on my phone still. <laughs> <gasps> Look who it is! What's going on? We're changing gears. Yep. CP was fired. He said he just got to go do the dishes. <laughs> hey, yes. The hospital, so. <laughs> All right, this is awesome. Hello. Hi. <laughs> what is up, Emily? How you doing? I'm good. You? I'm good. I, I think Emily's a big Nightmare fan. Am I right on that, Emily? That's not Emily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not Emily. It's oh. Braggart. Yeah, we're not Braggart. live, are we? Yeah, yeah, we're yes, live. We're live. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> welcome Braggart to the uh, to the screen stream. Hello, hello, Braggart. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. I want to talk like Braggart now. <laughs> What's I going know. on? I'm very good. <laughs> it's contagious. It is. <laughs> They're the same fucking person. Now, did you wake up dressed like Braggart today? Uh, always do. <laughs> of course. These are all mine. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this, Emily. Like, when you get into character, like, you, you're braggart and you, and then you're Killjoy, mm-hmm. uh, does, does, like, a new personality just automatically come out or do you have to pull that personality out? I mean, I script a lot of things beforehand, so I guess that helps. Yeah. Uh but not a lot of time to get into character. It's more, I don't know, working out the voice so I can do this fucking range. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know what? I think you're probably like, you're on a time crunch. You know, you're, okay, I spent all this time getting ready. So whether I'm there or not, um, something needs to fucking come out because I don't want to be like this for two days. <laughs> you, ever, <laughs> you ever fight that demon? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, especially yeah. as... Uh, Killjoy towards the end because that was especially intensive. Wh- oh, yeah. Which one do you usually get dressed as first, Killjoy or or uh, Braggart? Um, well, for Braggart, I have to um, put my hair in braids to because I don't heat style at all, so that's an overnight thing. Um, oh, okay. So it could oh, go yeah. either way. Like sometimes, so for the most part, it's Killjoy first and then Braggart. 
I think it's usually brag at first because I can yeah, always she'd wet my have hair to, and... Yeah, she'd have to start with her hair from braids <laughs> yeah, from I'm... sleeping overnight like that. So then she'd have to be brag at first and then afterwards she can wet See, her Lindsay hair down, wash her face. Because she's a makeup mm. queen, so <laughs> you know the I'm, process. I'm like, fascinated by how she's able to do all of these different characters and oh, shit. I think like, we all are. <laughs> put them together <laughs> and like that one scene in your last The Exorcist video where like both of you are in the same frame. I'm like, how are you... What? <laughs> what about the stream that she did where it was both of them in the same stream, frame? Yeah. Yeah, that was that insane. Was fun. Why are we talking about this? What's the stream about? Is it the ranking thing? It's about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's now about you. you just finally <laughs> showed up. <laughs> what the fuck, Emily? And, Emily, tell, tell us your favorite, one, your favorite Halloween, your favorite Nightmare on Elm Street, and your favorite Friday the 13th. Uh, right. <laughs> Favorite Halloween. That's kind of tricky. I've I've half seen most of the series now because he's been. You've only seen one in in twenty nineteen. Yeah, he's been watching them, so I've seen part of most of them. That's. Uh, I I really didn't like five. I thought that little girl was. Um... <laughs> you pro you probably caught the first half then. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting what they went with towards the end of four, but they didn't follow up on it. Same with um, yeah. a certain character in the latest Halloween. <laughs> Um, yeah. I think I like the first one best, to be honest. Yeah, that's a bold choice, Emily. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> we got a rebel. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. What's your favorite? Probably the second one, but I like a lot yeah. of three as well. I love that you said the second one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. All right, everybody. The, the second Nightmare well, on Elm Street is probably right. the most underrated of all of the films, mm -hmm. I think. The, so? the school bus scene is probably one of my favorite nightmare sequences. Mm -hmm. I love that scene so much. Because you got Freddy on the front of the bus, and then it just starts getting darker and darker as it gets closer to the cliff. And then Freddy's like coming, and then it's like completely dark. And I yeah. felt scared when I first watched that scene. I was like, oh, God, this is probably like the worst nightmare that anybody could ever have because they're on a school bus. Which mm. is, for, I, don't know, there's, I don't know if you guys agree with me on this, but I think school buses are kind of creepy. Am I wrong? On it's that? just it's it's school in I general. Know. I said that actually in my in my review for the first one with the boiler room, like yeah. when Nancy gets up from her class and goes down to the boiler room and the school bus scene, because schools kind of have that stigma of safe, like I'm safe yeah. here, nothing right, will happen to me. And when you take away that safety blanket and kind of corrupt it, it's creepy as fuck. I'm surprised yeah. they haven't had a slasher movie that's like set in a um, like a high school you prom know? night. It's oh yeah, right. I guess yeah. it is kind of set in a. Yeah, I guess it is. I guess a, you're a right. large portion of it is. Yeah. Yeah, and there's like five people that go to that school. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, I didn't want to waste Emily's makeup job there. So. Oh, okay. It was a pleasure having her on, though. I'm yeah. sure it was. Emily's Always Adventures awesome in Harland. We did not get her favorite Friday movie though. What's your favorite Friday movie? You've only seen the first one? No, you've seen one, four, and six at the very least. You've, I know you've yeah, seen. I know you've seen six. Yeah. Does she agree with Brian and one. think Friday the Thirteenth is a piece of shit? The first one. Brian. I, I like six too, but she she likes six. She better like six. Yeah, you better yeah. like six. <laughs> that's, that's where she thinks the first one's a piece of crap. Brian wants to know if you think the first one's a piece of crap. I think there's a lot of filler in it. Oh. All right. Team You're Brian. on the couch tonight. <laughs> you okay, idiots in the UK don't, don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, Brian, I got a question for you though. Um, now is YouTube be like YouTube in the UK? I've heard there's like some new rules that just came out where YouTubers in the UK are gonna be they're gonna have to like pay for access to any kind of uh, YouTube channels. A am I am I making any what? sense, Brian? No. Okay. <laughs> they passed a cro copyright law where memes are going to not be a thing anymore. Yep, my if son was telling me earlier, he was like, They're, they just passed this thing in the UK where, like, people from the UK are going to have to pay to even watch YouTube now or something like that. I don't I don't know. First I'm hearing. I'm okay. I'm kind All of right. bricking it right something. now. What? I got your payment, Brian. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, what number were we on? Oh, we talked about Dream Master, right? So 21, yeah. the average is Nightmare on Elm Street, 2010. Ooh, Ooh okay. there's a good conversation to be had. I got mine at 26. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine, mine's a bit high. Mine's twenty. Mine's probably the highest because I actually not a remake. Yeah. Yes, I've got it at twelve. Oh, oh really? yours is the highest. Right, you're, you're. I'm leaving. I'm out. You're no, drunk. I liked. I liked. I'm with Brian on this. I actually think Are there's you? a lot of good stuff in the in the remake. There, there, look, I, I will say this. Scenes. I'll say this. The remake does not deserve the amount of hate that it gets. Like people saying that it's absolutely the worst of the series or worst of all time. That is ridiculous to me. But I still don't think it's very good. For the simple fact that it tries way too hard and too often to recreate directly from Wes Craven's film, and it yeah. falls on its face every single time that it does that. When it does its own thing, it's pretty good. Like I actually, I'm one of those people that like what Jackie Earl Haley did. I like some of his lines. Yeah. I think he had a good mix of a little bit of dark humor in there. I think there's some good ish kills, but when it tries to do direct scenes. Like when he comes out of the wall and he's a fucking CGI ghost. Yeah, that, or, that's a weak you know, it, Oh my god, that stuff is horrendous. And then you got the he worst. He did a good job with what he was given. Yeah, yeah. And J- then you, you Jack get Earl Rooney Haley. Mara. Yeah, yeah. You get you get Rooney Mara. I liked Jack Earl Haley. Given. I did too. Yeah. You, you I don't think Rooney any of Mara. us are, are going to argue that. That, that was, I mean, Jack he was the best the since problem. Nightmare Two. I think as far because I'm a I love dark dark mm. as far as like scary wise yeah. but it goes too yeah. far in the other direction like they they try to to course correct from all the the fucking comedy but it's it's just a well, little too bleak. This well, is where they screw up the most. Drop your line, Cody. The biggest complaint <laughs> I hear about it is the characters, <laughs> and I actually I I I like the change in tone with the characters because. Most of the time, it seems like the characters were kind, not silly, but just a little lighter. Whereas this one, to me, I think this fit this generation. Because if you go outside and you see a lot of young people these days, a lot of them, probably not that melodramatic, but I think (laughs) young people are a little darker these days than they were in the 80s. I can't even. Katie Cassidy was really good at it. I loved Katie Cassidy in it. But Rooney Mara was garbage. The guy that sticks around to the end. garbage. She's garbage. The guy Garb- that sticks around, I would say she's garbage because she's, she, she, she's no she, Heather Langenkamp. I'll say that, but I think she wow. did. I think she did the best she she's, could. Dude, no pun no. intended. She's asleep the whole fucking movie. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it's it, the guy. I think Kyle Gardner is the name. He's he was in a couple of movies around that age. The guy looks like he's about to burst into tears every scene that he's in. You got the one guy who was in the Terminator show. His character is just a dick the whole movie. Yeah, and like I don't, none of the characters really appeal to me I, I in that. But the biggest I'd problem, never hear anyone say that Rooney Mara is no Heather Langenkamp. Oh man, I know. <laughs> but, um, but the biggest it problem, to be for said. Me, the biggest problem for me with the movie, was, especially with the character of Freddy, which goes back to screwing with the characters, is the fact that they take away the child murderer stuff and they just make him a pedophile. Yeah. yeah, and they don't. It, it, it makes no sense. And then they try to have like his glove is in the basement, so he's a pedophile, but he's got a fucking knived glove. Like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And I didn't like how they tried to do like the switch. Like there's yeah. a big portion of the film where they have you trying to think that no, right. he like he he was innocent and that he yeah. wasn't a bad guy. Yeah. So then you're, you're feeling empathetic towards him, and then they switch around like, oh yeah, no, he really was diddling kids. We can't root for you like, if you touch no. kids. Can't report. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and it, it, that really messed up the movie for me. Yeah, yeah. If I can, de- if you. I can separate this from, like, act like this is the only nightmare movie. Um, oh. And if I have to defend Rooney Mara a little bit, from a Ooh. very early on in the movie, a lot of really bad shits happening around her that she's reacting to. Uh, friends are dying, and I, you know, she. I, I, Judy if, you're that, if, you, if you're that tired, if you if you can't sleep for three days, I guarantee you you're gonna be acting pretty fucking comatose. Uh, uh, no, and I don't, I don't think know. she wanted to copy Heather Langenkamp. She didn't want to be like all bubbly and everything. Sure and, shit, and, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I might be the only guy that defends her. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. I know a lot of people, and and I'm, I'm not watching. This, she full, she admits herself she didn't give a fuck. Oh, I know that. I, I, that's one of my biggest uh, argument, not arguments, but complaints about mm-hmm. the movie was outside of the movie, the way she shit all over it. That was my biggest problem mm-hmm. with Rooney Mara. Her yeah. performance in the movie I, didn't bother me that much. Yeah, I had a funny relationship when I first saw the movie because I actually I got I had to watch it in theaters three days in a row. After it opened. Oh, wow. O- open, opening night. I tell the story in my review. Opening night, wow. whenever it was midnight. This is back when they did midnight releases. 
me and a buddy from work, um, we got off and we went, we're like, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street comes out tonight. So we went and we went and saw the midnight screening. And I had a few issues with it, but I really liked it when I first saw it. You yeah. know, that first impression shit. I was like, oh, man, that was actually pretty good. And then the very next day, we got off work again, and my manager was talking about it. And we're like, let's go see it. It was really good. So we went and saw it again the very next night. Mm -hmm. And I liked it a little bit less, but I still was like, all right, it's still pretty good. The very next day, I totally forgot that I had promised my dad that I would go see it with him. And I could not oh, let him know that I just went and saw it twice. He's like, hey, let's go see that new Freddy movie. And I was like, uh, okay. And I went <laughs> three days in a row. row. When I walked out of the theater that third time, I borderline fucking hated the movie. I was yeah, like, sure. uh, yeah. That's I mean, me for Phantom Menace. I did the same, not not three days in a row, but yeah. very similar. Uh, mm -hmm. mm. Genocide Productions, I don't have any problems with the windows moving because I figured it out. That was a brand new update, by the way, for Skype. When I, and I, you know, I was wanting to try it. And yeah. the windows just started going crazy. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then I did some research after. There was one YouTube video on all of YouTube that addressed it. This one guy. And mm -hmm. he was the only guy that like even attempted to even put a video out for it or anything. And so I reached out to that guy and I was like, hey, I, I had this problem on a stream last night. And so then he sent me this information. I was like, God, that never happens. Usually I'm, I spend a week trying to figure something out, but... I got, Did I, I just see it. Rob Zombie greater yeah, than Steven Spielberg? It, ignore Are you ignore kidding me? Amstel, come on, on, man. Ignore it, move on. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. All right. Well, what I'm happened? Moving on. Dementia. Moving on. Moving on. To the dementia. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's, what's next on the list? 20, the average is Curse of Michael Myers. Lee, go ahead and... <laughs> oh, and, 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 and hey, because you I, clearly weighed it up, so uh. you know what? Um, just to take you back, I going to see this in the theater. This was six years after five, and <sighs> you know, five was such a big letdown that that I was just wondering how in the hell are they gonna wrap up? At that time, though, nobody thought it was gonna be a trilogy. I was just wondering what the next movie was gonna be, and at a point, I was wondering if we were gonna have another movie. So when it came out. It was so different than anything that came before in like atmosphere in Myers. And, I mean, this was the most brutal Myers uh, seeing that scene at the lab when he goes in and just freaking cleans house. Nothing like that done had, had been done before by Myers. So I think it brought a lot of it took a lot of risks. It has plot holes galore. Mm -hmm. Um but it's one of the movies that I constantly throw in. I, I don't know if maybe that's just me, but I just I have a good time with uh, it flies by for me curse so See, but it's, technically though is it one of the ones like one of the actual movies that you throw in the, the most or is your rendition of two versions of that film the one that you throw in the most because uh, that's kind of cheating isn't it uh, um well I, I just i just made that cut like i think like two years ago so mm -hmm. if you if you go two years ago and before that I was watching The Curse, pretty much uh, the the theatrical cut, pretty much since the movie came out on VHS. So I mean, that's... he's got his boner jams version of Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Boner> jams. <laughs> and then, they email, then they changed their email. Then they until 2018 came out. Halloween Six was the most frustrating Halloween for me because wow, it... until uh -huh. Cody. Tell I, am I still here? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Tone-wise, Myers, the kills, the mask, all that shit was like awesome in Halloween 6, but the story can go fuck itself. Yeah, yeah. The two different cuts both feel like they're not even complete cuts. You got... The, some people really love them. I know, Lee, you're one of them. I think Paul Rudd is garbage in that movie. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, and yeah. I love him so much. And I love Paul Rudd, but he, I he think he's so... There at all. He feels like he was hired off the street. Yeah. Uh, What's it, funny um, though is if you look at his, like you can go on Rudy YouTube and Mara look at his, um, that one. his audition I've, tape. I've seen planks of wood that emote more than what Paul Rudd does in that six. Wow. I, check out his audition tape though on YouTube. It's actually pretty damn good. Like I think he's, he actually does a better job in his audition than he does in the actual movie. Wouldn't take much. But, uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, God it, damn. It, I'm going to go jump out a window. I now. don't, I don't. I don't even really like the the fam the Strode family like not the, not the the dad's kind of entertaining for being a dick 
But the the mom and the son, I'm not even really invested in them as characters. So like just the characters in the movie overall doesn't really interest me. Donald Pleasance, it's nice to see them. It's it's bittersweet, but he's also it's probably the most useless that Lubmus has been in any of the movies as far as I'm concerned. He's got no but it, to it, grab onto. Yeah, but it, it, it's it's one of those movies. It's, it's so frustrating for me because it's entertaining as hell, but there's just so many things that hold it back that like I want to love it the way that Lee does. But every time I watch it, there's things I'm just like, "Fuck!" Ugh. Yeah, but the, um, he's he is all over the place. You know, he's I think it's his first movie. He's discovering no. his, his talent. Can but, I hold on? Hold I need on. to address that. That scene at the end when Myers comes out of that, you know, uh, that the old woman she says something about how's it feel to be damned, and then he walks. Myers walks towards Tommy Doyle. His reaction, I think, in to Myers walking towards him, I thought was freaking flawless. You know, he, t- he kind of tilts his head. He's like a little bit crazy inside. At least he brought some flavor to the role. You know, he wasn't just kind of just there. So can I'd rather have agree- that than. Can Go we ahead. all agree that all three of the franchises, when they get fucking weird, they get really oh, yeah. fucking weird. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Lindsay, go ahead. Um, no, it's just that uh, he actually filmed Clueless before he filmed this movie. Oh. Um, but. Halloween six was released before clueless was. So everybody associates Halloween six well, as being his first film. Mariah O'Brien, who played in Beth clueless in the movie, is a hell of a lot better. Mariah yeah. O'Brien, who played Beth in the movie, she said that she remembers rehearsing his lines for clueless while they were on set. So I think mm. they were filmed like almost at the same they time. They could have been simultaneous then. Yeah. yeah. But either way, his acting in clueless is a hell of a lot better. Well, it's a different, different role. role. It's, it's a different like role. That's an Oscar worthy. I love Paul he has Rudd. a blank look on his face throughout the entire film. He, he goes full retard in the movie. You know what I mean? He's, he's like, <laughs> he's, he's, he's weird. He's I have weird. never had a problem with Paul Rudd and Curse. I mean, it, I, there's it, problems it, I have with the a movie, love or hate it's thing. not Paul Rudd. It's a love or hate thing because mm-hmm. I either see Paul Rudd was terrible or Paul Rudd was like amazing or incredible in the movie. Mm-hmm. But I, when I watch it and I love Paul Rudd, I think he's garbage in it. Yeah. So I, I'm on the hate side. I think I've figured out me and Cody because we often disagree. Mm. I think Cody likes boxes to be checked, things to be, I don't want to use the word safe, but if no. all those boxes are checked and they're safe, it's a good movie. Whereas I am like, I love how they, they, go, they can go you fucking you bonkers. Described yourself and with if, the Halloween if, franchise. if they have this, 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 and this, like full tilt, I fucking love it. So then Ray, I usually go Ray, for that movie. Ray, yes. So are you, are you saying that the box that Cody likes to be checked on this front is decent acting? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, at this point, I have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like there's certain boxes I need checking. Yeah, I've been. Script, st- I'm telling you, though, I've been acting, studying this thing with me direction. and Cody. Is it in focus? Often do this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> nine times out of ten, we're going to disagree put the film on the movie. In the camera. <laughs> It's the weirdest Holy. thing. He is the yin to my yang. It, it's it's just the way are, he's Drago, I'm Rocky, or vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh boy. And I love the guy like a brother. I'm serious. So mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of like that relationship we have, though. I concur. Yeah, I concur. it's kind of cool, you know. It is cool because we can respect each other and fuck with each other about oh, it, and not get mad and not talk to each other for eight yeah. months. Like I, I, I have a feeling. Yeah. I have a strong feeling, Cody. You will not like the new Suspiria. From what I've heard about it, I have the same strong feeling. And I had the opposite feeling. <laughs> yeah. Please be I, a tiebreaker. That is a perfect yeah. example of me and Cody's relationship. Suspiria, the remake. I, I can't wait well, for him well, to watch it. Well, to be determined. Yeah, to be determined. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. CP, what's I, the next I, number? I didn't like it. Just, just to, you know. Who gives from the trailers, from the trailers, I thought that it was going to be one of those remakes that I love and I defend more than the original because I liked Suspiria the original, but I didn't. It was during that time on Killer Flicks when it was like the new thing that Lee said is awesome, so everybody said it was great, <laughs> and so I, wow. I, I was like, I was like, okay, let me watch it. And then by the time I saw it, it had been overblown so much mm-hmm. as being like the top five of the year, or the the you know all time. I watched it. I was like, I definitely should have watched this years prior. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I still liked it, but I was like, okay. And now when I saw the trailers, I was like, now this looks like it's going to appeal to me more. But after I hear more about the movie and I hear about the tone and the things that they do mm-hmm. and the, all, okay. all the dances, yeah, all that shit, oh, I'm like, oh, maybe wow. not. 
<laughs> get so. there already. And then the third act, you're like, wait, where the fuck was all this? Why is this happening now? Where was this all movie? Yeah. I, I guess I'm kind it. of a sucker for uh, style over substance. I usually tend to give it a pass if it's style it, over substance. It checks the right box for you. Uh, it checks yeah. the right box. I get. I get. Si- I'll never live that. Does down. it have Michael Myers in it? <laughs> Does it have a badass Michael Myers in it? Does it take Check. forever in a fucking scene? Check. <laughs> hey, in my review, I did say this is a long fucking movie. I, I did. Well, say dude, that. I I just watched Mandy and I. I'm I'm on the opposite end of you on that too, where it's just like, all right, all right, this is gorgeous, but <laughs> oh, fucking dude, I, I loved Mandy. Now Nicholas I will admit, Cage gritting for twenty seconds with nothing going on, just. <laughs> Lee, Lee, you, you should sell T-shirts for your merch store with all the different check boxes. <laughs> just a bunch of boxes. <laughs> oh, Method yeah. actor check enduring box. flashback yeah. check. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't don't tell me to do it because you know I will. I have enough yeah. t-shirts in my store. So. Woody watches these streams. Don't tempt him with a good. Actually, time. I'm going to do a t-shirt and it's just going to have one square in the middle <laughs> with a check. It's Halloween <laughs> box. Just put box. I am the <laughs> I am the box that needs to be checked. <laughs> uh, so 19, the average 19 is finally Rob Zombie's Halloween one. Yeah, interesting. I had a 21. I had, a 21. Ooh, I had it at 16. See, now there's a movie I have problems with. I had it at 13. I had it at 16, I think. I have it higher than two. I think the third act is pretty damn good. I think the first act is unwatchable, and I think the second act is a gigantic missed opportunity. Yeah, I agree with that, Cody. Pretty much. Yep. Yeah, every time I watch, every time I rewatch the movie, the things that I like, I love more. The things that I hate infuriate me more. So it's like it stays the same, but it's it, every time the scale is just widened. For me, it's about my mood with that movie. My number twenty-five. What's that? Yeah. Ow! I will say that Rob Zombie's second film was my number twenty-five. That one's pretty high up there for me. It's in my top ten, I think. It, it, it's right at ten for me. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing me and Love or hate. On. Love or hate. Like Rob Zombie's mm. Halloween too. Fuck! 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 <laughs> Somebody put yuck, scene. yuck, yuck, Mark. That was one Marling. scene. It was like a like forty-five minutes of Halloween. The first one. That uh, scene could have been taken out. The Richard Brake fuck scene. Yeah. 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 <laughs> One fuck was enough. Could have been 18 is Friday the 13th 3. I had that one had a, higher. I, I had too. that one. Where That's my number that? 10. Oh, Some no, I didn't. I had it at 20. Some big saying, moments in that one. That one's, a good, that one's a good one, actually. 21. Friday 3D I have fun with. The problem with 3D is it takes fucking forever to get there, to get to the point. Like, as soon as Jason shows up, it's one of the best, and I love Richard Brooker in that movie. Yeah, yeah Richard actually, Brooker's it, it, so it, good. It was a really hard. It was a very hard choice between him and Ted White for me. Whenever I was watching, the movie, yeah. like, who do I like more? Ted White's just a little bit more extreme, while taking what Richard Brooker kind of innovated for it. But That's it's nice. like it's it's it takes so fucking long to get to the point. Going back to the barn eight hundred times, it's it, it's a have, it's a movie that is fun, but it's like I could almost skip the first thirty minutes. Have you guys seen the actual 3D, real 3D version of Part 3? No, that's the other I problem have it. with it, too. I am the that's only the one problem. that's seen it. Yeah, yeah. no, I have it with the, the glasses and everything. No, no, I mean, no, no, I no, have, no. You I got the, the anaglyph version. I'm talking about the real 3D version that's not available on the market. No, well, I, I've I, never seen it. I wish I could because that's the other problem with it is that movie, it dates itself more than any of the other sequels by doing that. It's meant to be seen in th- proper 3D. I've actually yeah. seen it, not to brag, but a friend of mine actually made his own version where he took, because there's a release of it on DVD and then the Blu-ray, and one of them, for some reason, is, now I'm, from a technical standpoint, I might be fucking this all up, but one is the left eye version, and he found a mm-hmm. version of the movie that's the right eye version, and he married mm-hmm. them together and made an actual 3D, uh, real 3D version, mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. sent me a digital file of it, and I watched it one night, it was glorious. It was Do you guys want a sip of this soda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you if you uh, ever get the chance, I, I I swear this is like my next holy grail. If they ever release the real three version of this, like a legit version, oh, it would be so awesome. Yeah, the movie with the legal trouble that that fucking franchise. Yeah, yeah right. Forget that. Best of luck. Yeah. Uh, seventeen is Rob Zombie's Halloween two, which I had at twenty. 
20? Oh, okay. I'm, I, yeah, I, like I had it number 9. I wow, nice, at Lindsay. 10. 10 good for me. Oh, I weighed it down. Oops, sorry, guys. I guess Brian I should pull five. up my letterbox list. Oh, no, I Brian, where I'm at. <laughs> it's one of those movies where, like, look, I'm, I'm never going to really argue too much with people that don't like it yeah. as long as you have yeah. reasons that you can actually back up, which I know Brian does. Um, it's a polarizing Rob Zombies, film. It's very pol- Yeah, love or hate, absolutely. There's no middle. Yep. But Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, for whatever reason, for as much shit as I give that guy's movies, that movie works every single time that I watch it more than the last time I watched it. Mm-hmm. There's that, there's certainly some flaws there, Loomis being the biggest one. Um, but for what he was going for, I think that it's one of the best Halloween sequels. Yeah. And certainly the ballsiest. It's my number 11. That's the thing. It took chances, right? Yeah. 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 It definitely took chances. And I think the Everybody chances always says, work. like, doing remakes and, like, oh, you're just doing the same thing over and over again. Well, he didn't. He did something completely different. Am I the only it's, one that loved and how many times Phillips that paid off in these series? Is, 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 is. What are you saying, Lee? Am I the only one that loved Jeff Daniel Phillips in that movie? Because I never heard anybody mention him, and I thought he was great. I mean, he's a. He, he, no, I. Mm. He can't comes afford outside. the new kids. I like him in 31. Can you loan comes, me some bones? He comes oh, outside and gets like... his head stomped. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't really think of him too much of as a significant character, but I know you're a big fan of him in yeah. a lot of things. So, I never really, I've never seen him in anything where I really gravitated toward him. That was the first movie like I saw him in. About, we've talked about Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 ad nauseum, I think, um, mm-hmm. in school. Yeah. Okay. So, sure. Let's just move on. Move on. All right. All right. All right. 16, A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, the gay one. That's my number 10. <laughs> <laughs> I have that at 19. I think that coming yeah, from the too. Freddy guy, coming from the Freddy guy, I think that Freddy is awesome in it. Uh, the opening scene is great. Uh, Mark Patton's really good in the movie, but the movie is chock full of such, and not the gay stuff, just weird yeah. shit in general. It's chock full of it that it's a very mixed bag experience for yeah, me. You got him- the darkest Freddy, and then you have. Coach Snyder like getting weird towel bird. snapped and, you know. <laughs> when he getting, pops out at the party, is kind of fucking Yeah, weird. it, it, it like, gives what? the middle finger to the rules of the franchise. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's like somebody really wanted to see Freddy slay 20 dudes, so he's like, how the fuck are we going to make this work? Um, yeah, it, it's fun. I I'm re-watched feeling really it. weird right now that I think me and Cody have had a couple of movies at the exact same place. Yeah, I know. I saw you cheating off my paper. (laughs) Actually, I think you and Cody probably line up the best out of all of us with your taste. I could probably actually. (laughs) Here's a question, though. Even though you know this is referred to as the gay movie of the Friday series, but was Jesse actually gay? I don't think he was. Yes. I don't think he was. I think think he was. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. They don't really do anything. They to lay make it. Me think they lay it on so thick. I mean, they dip that brush at the bottom of the There's fucking subtext, can. Yeah, they, but I mean, because he, he even like makes out with um, um, Meryl Streep at the end of it. You know, that, that means nothing. I have I, I know numerous that. gay I know friends that, that I've but made I'm it just, with. I'm just saying, I haven't seen any concrete evidence. I do say that the, I do think that there is strong gay subtext in the movie, but him as a character, I don't. You know, scene to scene, I don't see anything with him except for maybe the one scene in the bedroom but, with the guy. But, dude, yeah. you recreated a scene. <laughs> I did. I sure did. That was the biggest. Oh yeah, my- <laughs> Lee, Lee, you'd never look more gay when you did that. I, next, know, so. I stand yeah. corrected. Just- when I had to do it, do you know how many times it took me to be able to do that? Because I just kept cracking up. It was a. It was dude, a first take up, for me. He woke so. up from a nightmare and immediately went to a gay bar. <laughs> like, he didn't go to a bar. He skipped five I, bars to get to the gay bar. He, I am he not needs looking the hot good chick on this that he's stream. making out with to go yeah. to his to sleep with his buddy. House. Yeah, yeah, his guy friend's house to spend the night. Yeah, I'm not looking good on this stream at all. At very, at, at very, <laughs> at, all. at minimum, at I minimum, have failed he's bisexual. At every yeah, turn. curious at the very, at the absolute. But you know what? My curious. motto is: when you're wrong, stay wrong. So fuck it. Let's do this. Fuck. Okay. You find a cheaper pussy. Hey. <laughs> what? <laughs> if you find a cheaper pussy, fuck it. Something's trying to get into my body. <laughs> I like that line, CP. <laughs> That's from uh, from Dustal Dawn. Uh, Apple yeah. pie pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Dog pussy, cat pussy, chicken pussy. You nailed it. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <my. clears throat> 
Uh, I saw that movie when I was six years old in the theater. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> uh, number 15 is Friday the 13th, 1980. I don't know how it's weighed down. That's 26. Adam, Brian. That's where I had it at 15. <laughs> I had it at number 12. Yeah, I have it in my Look, it, it, the funny thing about Friday the 13th, usually in most horror franchises, kind of the unwritten rule is the first one is God. You would be hard pressed to find Friday the Thirteenth fans that say the first one is their favorite. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Because people love Jason. Yeah. Yep. And I got it first. at number eleven. Easy, <laughs> Bry. Brian, you, you or thirteen. It's number thirteen for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number fourteen, Halloween two. The the original Halloween. Solid two. sequel. Boring in the middle. I have number that eight for me. Thirteen for me. Yeah, number I mean sixteen for me. Yeah, I think it was twelve for me. It's, it's pretty. If, if it's they pretty. if they would have tightened up the middle on that movie, it could have been like as yeah. good as the first movie. My issue with two is there's no story. It's just it it, yeah. it, it look it, like <laughs> I say that Friday the Thirteenth took influence from Halloween. Halloween two took influence from Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> well, you've heard <laughs> the story right with after uh, John Carpenter. Two o'clock in the morning, you know, he had a fat check sitting on his desk that they gave him to make the movie. He didn't want to make the movie, write the movie, and two o'clock in the morning, he's like, "What the hell am I gonna do with this?" And he was like, six pack of beer later, fuck it, she's his sister." <laughs> yeah, and that's, good. that's the other big thing. I mean, you guys know my thoughts on that. I don't like that direction at all, especially the way that they executed it. You could take that scene out of the movie. The movie's exactly the same. It, it is, it's, and it's I never so, had a problem so with the sibling away. angle, but I, I get what you... It, it wasn't needed. But you know what? How would we have 10 more sequels if there wasn't a sibling angle? You know what I mean? Life uh, finds a way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, money finds <laughs> a way. But <laughs> uh, number... uh, 2018 found a way. Yeah, it sure did. We're getting there. We're getting there. Number 12. No, no 13 is Friday the 13th Part 2. A lot of two. Uh, section. I have that at 14, right above the first one. Oh, that's number 11. Oh, that's going to be way up there. For, number eight for me. Yeah. Yeah, I have it at nine. I love Part 2. I really don't like Sackhead Jason. I don't think he's intimidating at all for me. That's uh, fine but, with on the Friday. But. The but I think that everything that it does, it does a little bit better than the first Friday. I think the reveal of Jason as the killer is a little better because we actually kind of get shown from the beginning that Jason is the killer or possibly is the killer. Oh, don't pad I Brian's think. argument from I, before. Okay. Uh, I think the kills are <laughs> right. a little better. I mean, we all love the wheelchair kill. I think the characters yeah. are definitely a step up. Mm. I've always had a soft spot for Sackhead Jason because he was one of the first that really scared the shit out of me. Like... um, I think part he's three was fuck. Well, he's, the, the, you got to admit, over himself. you got to admit though, the scene when he di he dives through that window at the end, that I mean, if you saw Makes that when no you sense. were a kid, that scared the crap out of me. Makes no sense, maybe, but it scared oh, the shit out of me when I was a kid. And also, it, the sackhead thing, like it had already been done before. Yeah, that's yeah, true. It's so that's true. it that wasn't as original. Like when well, I had it ranked Myers low, mask, it's so. hillbilly Jason. It was suspenders and if it if was they would have if they wouldn't have put overalls on him, then we probably be wouldn't be calling him Hillbilly Jason. You know? Yeah. But 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 it was to me it's just when after you get the reveal, whenever he gets out of the bed and then it's him versus um what's her name? Jenny? It's Steele. That's a great Jenny, third Amy act. Steele? But yeah, but, uh, yeah, Amy Steele. Like every time he tries to get her, he like she kicks his ass because he's stumbling over himself. He's breaking his pitchfork. He's fucking falling off chairs and shit. Like he's the he's the only Jason in the franchise to me that was like almost comedically not scary by the but, time I watched. It. But it has uh probably one of the greatest final girls ever in Amy's Oh Stewart. yeah. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy's and the whole she the nailed scene it. the scene with the decapitated head and fooling it. That's a really iconic Mother's scene in the franchise. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotta love that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always had a soft spot for Sackhead. I, I like Sackhead. I would, pr I would like a just an all-out Sackhead Jason movie. That, that would never happen, of course. But did you say you have a soft spot for Sackhead? Is, is that? <laughs> I did. Yeah. I thought. Okay, I thought the Sackhead. Like we're gonna get there very soon, I'm sure. But I thought the Sackhead for the first, tw you know, 18 minutes of Friday the 13th the remake was far and away better Preach. executed. Preach. Yeah. I agree with that. I totally agree with that. I mean, it's a uh -huh. different time, too. I mean, this He's is fucking menacing in 2009. We'll, we'll get oh, it. Yeah. Uh, 12 is Freddy vs. Jason. Awesome. I had that at 13. Yeah. Seven for me. Uh, I think I'm. I think I think it's back for me, Freddy vs. Jason. 
I think I put it at. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, it's sixteen. Seven. Well, other than Jason Lives, it's probably the most fun movie out of all yeah, of them. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun, but the characters are annoying as no. hell. No. Oh my god. The, you what, defend Roland? Tina, but you're going to throw Freddy versus Jason. No, no, no. <laughs> Roland's chick, she's awful. She should never. She has no business. She's not that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm on the no I'm business. in the end of the camp that don't. However, see the guy who's was the the boy that she's in love with, I can't remember what his name is, but he was supposed to be Brad Renfro. Yeah. And Brad Renfro talking died. About, yeah, that breaks talking my about, heart. Um, what the fuck's his name? Ritter. Jason Ritter. Yeah. Brad Renfro has been, been dead that long? Yeah. 16, yeah. 17 years? Oh, really? yeah. Jeez. Long time. Freddy vs. Jason was like, I was fucking obsessed with that movie for the entire year of 2003. Mm. As soon as I stumbled upon the website and the trailer, like back when movies had websites and you could like look at the trailer and the screenshots <laughs> and shit, I was Freddy vs. Jason obsessed until that movie came out. I was on message boards. I was writing. The, mm, <laughs> we're did you guys laugh. see we're, that one in the theater? I yes, did. I did. Open I night. did. I was in I was in Korea at the time for the year, and I was so freaking upset because that was one movie I wanted to see so bad in the theater. Ugh. And that might be one of the reasons why it's lower on your list because it's yeah. very important. See that in the theater. That's got to be an audience well, friendly. Movie. I saw it in the theater, and no, like Monica Kina, she's like I'm fine with. She's um, great. Being I proud love of your assets, Kina. but she literally walks like her her tits enter the room five minutes before she does. Yeah, so what's wrong with you're gonna, that? I don't see the problem. If you're going to pronounce yourself, you might as well show them. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll kind of. That's the way I walk into a room. She is actually one of my favorite final girls in either of the no, franchises. No. <laughs> Cannot stand her. If, well, if they had she, I loved too. her in that. She was one of my favorite parts of the movie, actually. I thought that I think that it's the best Freddy since Dream Warriors, uh, as far as the comedic, scary mix. I think that uh, even though he's not Kane Hodder, I think that Jason is effective Thank in the you, movie for what he's going for. Um, I think the kills are awesome. I think it's a blast to watch. Um, it gets a little too bloody in the end. Like they go a little bit like, okay, we get it. You know, you're supposed to, it's fucking Freddy and Jason fighting. You don't think there was too much blood at the end. And I, I love it's exaggerated, blood. but it, it, yeah, what about Freddy That's versus Jason is not exaggerated. Thank it's you, Robert Shaw, by the way. Really nice. Really appreciate it. Yes. Okay. That, moving on. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I like the, the the one thing as a Friday fan, they showed us Jason as a kid drowning and they gave us like a little bit of, it, mm-hmm. granted it was a dream sequence, but it was a really neat little sequence to see Jason getting bullied and drowned. Like that was yeah. a neat little thing that was just neither here nor there. Uh, 11 is a new nightmare. Ooh. Mm. Oh, you mean That's, H2O? <laughs> it's 11 for me too. <laughs> it feels Seven. like H2O. It checks all the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I think New Nightmare is, is definitely like one of the best written and directed movies of the entire franchise for sure. Like it's an West ambitious Craven's script. Kind of, I just think it's kind, of, uh, kind of yeah. watered down a little bit. It's 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 the the Freddy movie that I probably rewatched the least though. Yeah, because it's just so it's so different. It's Scream before thing. Scream was a thing. You know, it, it's 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 a great movie. I don't think it's a great Freddy movie. Yeah. John Kyle Stanton, you are correct, sir. I probably would have went AWOL for sure <laughs> if it was a new Halloween movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. What, what's next, CP? Uh, 10 is Halloween 3. Oh, that's enough, a good one. Which is higher for me. Yeah. It's I love higher Halloween. for me, too. Yeah. I think I you did can not all, have it. all assume that's not in my top 10. 14. Number 9. Wow. For wow, really, Cody? Mm. Mm. Where did, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Uh, right above Friday the 13th, probably. Number 23. What? Brian. Brian, what? Brian, uh, I'm going to send you some of my medications so that maybe you'll start feeling a little bit better because I... Hey, ah. Brian, how That's many times have you watched Halloween 3, just out of curiosity? Three times. Three yeah, okay, I'll All give right, you that. That's it, enough. But it's I mean, <laughs> it's one of those that I just love it more and more every time I watch it. And I've seen it like freaking 50 times now, probably. I feel like it's a bootleg Cronenberg movie. Yeah, it does feel like a Cronenberg. And it feels like a Carpenter yeah, movie, too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nine is Halloween 4, which I had way, way lower. I had like an 18, I think. I had that at 12, and you know, of the entire Halloween franchise, that's the movie that moved up the most for me. 
when I actually reviewed them. Because the yeah. first time I watched it, I was like, God, like it, it, I was so lukewarm on everything about that movie. It was one of those things where I was like, damn, I really should have watched this growing up because I don't really, I didn't get any of like everybody's, I'd say most Halloween fans at least have it in their top three. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get it at all. But then I watched it this most recent time with the exception of The Mask, which I still think is horrendous. Um, I think that it's actually it, the story and the characters is the best of most of the sequels. And I like how Michael Myers kind of like systematically takes on the town. Like he actually like yeah. has a plan. Like he takes out the power, then he takes out the police force, and then he Bucky. slowly takes out... Yeah, and I, I didn't catch any of that when I watched it the first time. So seeing all these little other things that the movie had to offer, I actually grew to like it quite a bit. I think Myers was more a phantom in that movie than any of the uh, the other movies. It's really the movie that made me the obsessed Halloween fan that I am. Like that, I, I think it. I, I love the last. So we act have that movie to blame. Film. Yes, that's the one that <laughs> caused everybody all this freaking bullshit. <laughs> Um, I'll say this too, and I know you guys are going to rag me for this, but there's a chance that Halloween 4 could jump back up to my number two, just because of how much that movie means to me. And right oh, now, there- I'm, I'm definitely in this high right now, but uh, Halloween 4, man, that movie just... Uh, Rachel is like one of my favorite final girls. Uh, mm-hmm. She's one that I really wanted to live in part five until the end and maybe you know give her life for Jamie, but um, th- their relationship with each other between Rachel and Jamie... I, it, to me, it's one of the strongest like relationships uh, as far as like slashers go. You know, I loved Rachel. Halloween Four is my number three, I, and I, I really like the scene on the roof. I think it's yeah, a really it's a great, great scene. tense scene. It's mm-hmm. like we don't you, we don't get many great set pieces. I don't think it tends to just be you know Michael Myers. You know, I, I mean, in general throughout the the franchise, it's not really what. Nightmare on Elm Street is more the set piece kind of thing, whereas mm. Halloween isn't. So to have this set piece on on this roof of this house, yeah, um, it's it's really tense. And yeah, I I think story wise, Halloween four, I I put Halloween four over the new movie, yeah, for, for just on story terms alone. Um, I think it has the perfect balance of tension and gore. You know, uh, because you got you got a couple scenes that, you know, the gun through the stomach and all that. But then there's a lot of really tense scenes in that movie, too. Like Michael might be arguably his scariest in four, you know, four and six, I think, is where you get like the scariest Myers. Aside from the new movie that came out. I mean, we're going to talk about that one. But uh, yeah, I mean, Uh four. every time I watch it, it still fires on all cylinders. Number eight, Jason lives Friday the 13th part six. Somebody weighed it down. That's my, all I'm saying. The paintball scene no, is I, one of my favorite scenes in all the Friday the 13th movies. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine for me. Somebody had it higher Number nine than ten. Number nine for me is my second favorite Friday film. So. Um, Lindsay, you're a little quiet there. Where, where did you have what? it on your list? What? Yeah, yeah where go did ahead, you Lindsay. Have Jason lives. Number 20. Yeah, where did you have Jason X again? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I Don't. see what you're doing there, CP. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> I, I guess if I need like to 16. tell anybody, my number one. Uh, I think Jason Lives is a little overrated. I think the intro is perfection. I think that's where everybody falls in love with this movie so much, is that intro, Frankenstein-style intro, I think is one of the coolest intros out of most slasher movies. Uh, and, and I think it does have some great characters with uh, uh, Tom Matthews playing Tommy Jarvis. Bro. Bro, Bro, he does a fantastic job. Um, <laughs> what's the girl's name in the movie, CP? Jennifer Cook. Yeah, Jennifer Cook is fantastic in it. My, the paintball scene is a little cheesy. I don't like Fat Jason in that scene. Damn. Um, She's probably one of my least favorite characters yeah. in Who, uh, Fridays. Uh, it does have the back crack, like, though. like Final Girls. The back crack is one of the best kills. The sure. final girl is Tommy. So that's, well, yes, but that's, she still yeah. survives to the end, too, so... Mm-hmm. Ipso facto, she is also a final girl. <laughs> However, to defend myself, which I don't even think that I'm, this is going to do anything, mm-hmm. but I watch, if I'm looking for comedy in a Jason movie, I'm going for Jason X. And that's the one that I watch the most. So well, not the most, fair, but that's a fair I watch more than Part 6. 
Because if I'm yeah. going for comedy, I'm going for straight up. That's full like on saying, comedy. you know what? Instead of going to a comedy club, I'm going to watch some cringe videos mm-hmm. for comedy. <laughs> I'll, that's, I'll back that's Lindsay like up on that. Instead of having a massage, I'm going to have a kick in the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, if if I'm wanting a, a Jason movie that's fun, it's either Jason X or Jason Lives for me. I don't defend her. No, I'm not being serious. Now, having said that, <clears throat> I don't think either of those movies hold a candle to part four. I would agree with that. Oh no, yeah. no, no, uh, no, no! I had a fun. I had a fun time with Jason Lives. I'm not a fan of the the Home Depot Jason look, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I like the mix of, uh, of Home comedy. Depot. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like the mix of comedy. I love the Alice Cooper soundtrack. Alice Cooper was my yeah, first Alice concert awesome. and my third concert, so that was cool. Like it, it's definitely one of the more fun, like kind of crowd pleasing. Um, Friday the 13th movies, but I also prefer my Friday the 13th to be dark and bloody, and that's why I have two uh, above this one, but we'll get there. Seven, Halloween H2O. My number eight. Mm. Lee's number, number seven. <laughs> my number four. Let my me see where H2O is. It, it, it's probably pretty far down there. Mm-hmm. It's 23. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Go wait in the car, Lee. Myers means a lot oh, to wow. me, okay? Myers means a lot. That's all I'm going to say about H2O. I'll never understand all the, the issues with Myers in this. Yeah. No, I love this. it. It's such a fun movie. You know, yeah. I, I, can I like can I take you back to when I saw H2 in the theater? The crowd loved oh. it. The crowd was like, yes, this was great. The ending was great. I think <laughs> I was the, the only like, one. What the fuck are you all on? <laughs> I think I was the only one in the theater. When that head chopped off, I felt a sadness just like rip through my body. Mm. Like I was just like, no, you killed my boy. Um, mm. Having said that, though, that is probably one of the coolest scenes out of the whole movie. It, it, it's a great scene. The whole last act's really good. Um, but I remember after watching that movie in the theater, like the next couple of days, I was just like, there was something off about that movie. You know what I mean? Like, it, there was just, it didn't feel like Halloween to me, like the rest of the Halloween movie. Could it be the Scream score that was laid under that? It, movie, it's a few perhaps? things, you know? And it's still a good, I think it's a good movie. It's a fun slasher. I throw it in a lot. It's not one that I throw in the least, for sure. But I have my problems with it, you know? It's just, uh, it's, I want my Myers to be like fucking full on. That's my biggest problem with it. And, and you know, six. maybe I'm a little hard if, 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 on like, Christopher For me, Rand. I just think that if, if you could take the way that the new movie was directed yeah. and shot and everything and use the script they had for H2O, <laughs> you'd have a perfect Halloween film there. For Agreed. Me. Yeah. Agreed. I can't slide. I'll, I do I'll go have with that. problems with the script in H two O too, though. I do. I mean, like only like near as many as the new one. As not, far not, as like, if, if, if you take them just on script basis, I'm not talking cinematography, the shooting, or anything like that. Just the scripts. Put them two screenplays in front of me. Yeah, I can. I can see a lot more problems with that new I movie. Think the, I think the scenes play out. They make more sense in H two O. But what happens in those scenes, I much prefer in the new movie. Like, the, the new, bathroom the scene is a perfect contrived. example. The bathroom scene, nothing happens in H2O. He just walks in there, he scares her. And, and it's not even like, it's it's there for tension, but I didn't even really feel, like, tense during the scene. Whereas the bathroom scene in the new movie is, like, one of my favorite kills out of the whole franchise. But so, you don't but think that's contrived, though? It feels like a greatest hits movie. The new yeah. film feels like they've taken all the best stuff from each of the different movies, perfected them on, on a scene level, but forgot to string them together in a story that's really as coherent as it should have been. Yeah. Um, I like the film. Don't get me wrong. I but... can't argue with you on that. Uh, I, I do think they took a, a few too many liberties with callbacks. Um, they especially knocked, when you're going to have the balls to say that everyone's irrelevant and we're going to delete all of you and just yeah. do it the right way, but you're going to do everything that they fucking did. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, and I'll, I'll even say the two times I watched the movie in the theater, the new one, I, I was freaking like cloud nine loving every bit of it. But even after those two watches, I'm like, yeah, that was so amazing. A lot of callbacks. Sure. Mm-hmm. So it makes me wonder where it will sit like in say a couple years. If, yeah. if when I watch it, will I be like, yeah, I really love that scene. I don't think you will, Lee. I don't. I don't know. It's. I. I still love it to death. I, I can't wait to watch it on 4K. All that stuff. But uh, yeah. I can't argue with the stuff that you guys are saying. I, I, you we know, haven't. It's we haven't gotten to it yet. Either. Okay. Cool. Sorry. <laughs> Number six is Friday the Thirteenth, two thousand nine. 
Yeah. Well, if we, the fact that we haven't gotten to it does say something. I mean, we're, number we're up five. to number six already. Number six. Mm-hmm. Look, I this is the one movie that I literally have absolutely no understanding whatsoever. Cody, 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 Cody. Just, just before you continue, I'll just say up front, everything Cody's about to say, just assume is coming out of my mouth as well. Cody, yeah. continue. What I have absolutely about? zero understanding for the criticisms for this movie in the context of the franchise that it's fucking in. Because mm-hmm. every oh, okay. single criticism, every single one that people throw at this movie to call it garbage or the worst or not a good sequel, you could use that same exact criticism for any of the Friday the 13th movies. So why it's held against this one but forgiven for the other 11 baffles me. The first yep. 20 minutes, the prologue of 09, are oh. absolutely it's, incredible. It's the best part. Perfection. And you know, as, as a fan of the I movie, I will agree I with you. It's the best part. So why not make the whole movie like that? Why why this utter you departure couldn't. and just, just fucking... It's, it's fucking what's a departure? It's a departure, of departure. It. How is it an utter departure? Yeah, the, I don't see a departure ca- whatsoever. The fucking the Barbie dolls and the, and the ridiculous caricatures that there are from from the prologue to the the rest <laughs> yeah, of the movie. Yeah, because they never did that the, anyway. Yeah, because there was no Barbie reason. doll in the beginning. America with her tits. No, the, there's tits all over the place. Well, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not one of those Barbie, Barbie dolls, dolls. on a screen stream for crying out loud. I get well, what no, Cody. No, and... I, I'm not. I'm not refer. I'm not. Hey. I'm, I don't. I don't mean the nudity. I, I mean the fucking characters themselves are just just deplorable. Yeah, exactly. They're just, just, they're just I, so intolerable. Just again, don't fuck yourself. Again, oh, the entire place. franchise has yeah, characters like you, that. Uh, you, well, well, my, my point is that the the prologue <laughs> is 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 a different movie compared to I the rest of so the movie. Much. I don't think I'm so. so at go, all. Ahead, go ahead, Lee. Go ahead. So no. 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 You're fine. I was just. Because I wanted to address what Cody said about you. Yes, you could find similar characters in every yeah. movie, but Perfect. when I when I walk into those movies, my brain doesn't say, "Please, please, please get this fucking guy off yeah. of my screen," because mm-hmm. I hate his guts more than uh-huh. anything. That does not happen with any of the other movies. And there's like six this of them movie in, for in some reason. Trent makes me want to throw a baseball at my TV. I hate him. I, I love watching when he's on screen. You're supposed Trent to. I'm more but, entertaining to watch than so many other characters within the franchise throughout. Yeah. Um, like Jason X. Jason X is filled with characters that I wish they'd just throw off the screen. I agree. I yeah, agree. I, agree. I do agree. There are a couple. I, I think you know what it is. Trent takes it to the another level. For me, for me, for for Lindsay, for Cody, for Brian, he's great. I love him. But for me, yeah. I fucking hate him. <laughs> I'm serious. I hate the guy. Well, and I'm sure you guys. That's I'm sure point. you guys have a you movie out too. there that you have a character that you can't Tina. stand. Tina. Exactly. Exactly. Tina. Tina. He's my Tina. So there you okay. go. Okay. Fair so, enough. Yes. But that's Fair one enough. character. That's one character. Your but this is my. Well, well, this I, I would this argue that there's like four or five of them in, in that in that movie. Just like, aside from Jared Padalecki. Who is your main character? He's great. And aside from Daniel and Panabaker, who is kind of your tease for your final girl, yeah. which again is a very cool story direction, which is something you don't get very often in the Friday the Thirteenth films, mm-hmm. that she gets killed off, and it's actually a surprise kill that you weren't expecting. Yeah, because in any other film, in any other film, you just you don't care because they're all basically cannon fodder, and just we'll get whoever we get at the end. You get. The most badass, brutal, scary, and effective Jason in the entire franchise, mm-hmm. in my opinion, by yeah. a mile. Yeah. You get awesome kills. Oh, Derek it's Mears the, was the movie, badass. The, the movie is front-loaded to where the best kills are in the first 20 minutes, but there are good kills throughout. It takes the pieces of story from the first four films, which don't have very much story. So when you take a chunk out of one, a chunk out of two, a chunk out of three, a chunk out of four, and put them together, there's more story there than any of the Friday films for the most part. Daniel Pearl's cinematography takes, is awesome, too. Yes, the direction and the cinematography. I don't even have to get into the contest of that. Yeah, that uh, it's probably the best and, and, of the whole franchise. Aside from that, some of the different directions that they take, which everybody bitches about, like, oh, he kidnapped the girl. No, she looked like his mom, so he keeps her as, like, this trophy and this reminder of his mother, which is totally consistent with the yeah. character. Yeah. 
I actually Jason enjoyed runs. it more Jason the last one. Jason runs in the first four fucking films. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or yeah. The first, I'm sorry, the first two through four. Yeah. But that, it, it, that's my example. The, every single criticism I ever hear against this movie feels like somebody heard somebody say it and they just keep repeating it. Mm-hmm. Which I haven't said any of those things for the record. I, I don't. It, it, the running thing is ridiculous. That he, he, he does run. <laughs> but I've heard it. But I've yeah. heard it. No, every I, single I, I time. know. I've, I've heard it too. It's just, yeah. But I don't know. I just I don't get it. I, I, I'm not saying 2009 uh, Friday the 13th is like the greatest film of all time. It definitely has yeah, its no. flaws. I prefer but, it over H2O. <laughs> but the fact <laughs> that the fact that most and I will go out on a limb and say most most Friday the 13th fans detest it and put it at the bottom two or three of their list it confuses the fuck out of me. Really stupid. It. Really is. I did actually put it above H2O. Okay. It's I actually enjoyed favorite. it more the last time though. It's your second. It's your number two. It's, well, no, it's my second favorite Friday. Friday movie. Oh, okay. It yeah. definitely it moved up a little bit for me the last time I watched it. I actually found myself having a good time with it. I just I, I, t- still... I turned it off at the title screen. I'm like, all right, Friday 13th. I was basically I Lee when I saw that movie in the theater. Yeah. Lee when he saw Halloween 2018. That was me seeing there you go. Friday the 13th, I like 2009. That. I respect that. That's Perfect cool. example right now in the chat. Friday the 13th remake is a pointless movie. All it does is cram the first four movies into one. Again, <laughs> then any of the Friday the Thirteenth sequels are pointless if you're going to use that. That yeah, thing. <laughs> they all true. take the same fucking template. Plus, they're pretty all, much the all template. you're pointing out there as well is that those first four Friday movies only had enough story to for fit one one movie. Yeah. Could so it's like could it be a sequel? Could Friday the t- t- uh, no. the remake? Could it technically be a sequel? No, no, no. okay, no. Right. I just just <laughs> Uh, speaking of non-existent sequels, for number five, finally, Halloween 2018. Well, I'm Halloween. surprised Fuck, it's, it's number high. five, given that I'm the only one that like sings its praises out of all of us. That's uh, Halloween. Eight. It's 17. eight on my list. Seventeen. That's yeah. number five. Who Nine. put it so high then, besides me? Brian just said five. Yeah, but if you average all of us together, it should be. I said eight. Hmm, that's weird. Okay. What, Lindsay? What is yours? 15. And where did you have it, Lee? Number two. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah your number two weighs <laughs> I'm it. The swing. Yeah. Okay. I'm I, still surprised I, you didn't I've put it number one. I've once so far, so I, I can very easily imagine this go like dropping down a bit. Yeah. Because, because I think since we've been discussing it like over the past few weeks, a lot of the criticisms that have been brought up for it, some of them have actually stuck for me. And mm. I think when when I go back and I when I eventually see it for that second time, I I think that's going to be a make or break deal. And I think, yeah, is it five now? Because I like the style. They get Michael Myers perfectly right. Um, cinematography is absolutely beautiful on it. Uh, I love the mm-hmm. way it's directed. The performances are all great. It's just that story. It's the script, and it's like you've got all these amazing elements, but I feel like they're built. On a house made on a on a on a on a bed of sand, um, and yeah, I feel like it's going to be one of those where, with each subsequent viewing, I'm going to start finding f- uh, faults rather than, say, with the Friday the Thirteenth remake, in which people rag on it and rag on it and rag on it yeah. with criticisms, and every time I go to it, I'm like, those criticisms are absolute bollocks. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so that's gone up for me over, over time, and I feel like Halloween's going to be the reverse of that. So well, that, that big uh, twist, there, a little, little contrived. Think, it's one of the, the few movies in all of these movies that there were scenes that literally sent chills, like gave me chills. You know, I was the one being when he, the very first scene when he walks up to Myers in Smith's Grove, and the build for that scene, and then when it goes into the, I, I remember I was just like. I think I, my wife was sitting next to me and I couldn't breathe because he kept saying, say something, say something. And then when it goes into the thing, I was just like, oh, God. That was just, I think I you literally yelled breathe. that in the theater. You couldn't breathe because you were waiting for him to speak. Just like turn to the camera and be like, guess who's back, bitch. And then Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I think it, it's, it, it's competing with Halloween 6 for the most frustrating movie in the franchise for me. And I, I said a lot of my piece on, on Halloween because... It does so many things awesome that it fucking infuriates me the things that they do so bad. Yeah, I think it's funny how you and Mike pretty much said 
like the opposite of each other. Because uh, uh, Mike was like, it, it, it really just killed on so many things, and there was a the 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 things that were kind of trivial is where it messed up. And for him, it didn't bother him at all. And for you, it was just like that ruined the movie for me. So I, I found that kind of interesting. And both of you are right, just for different reasons. Mm-hmm. It was just it was. Yeah. I, I found it interesting though. I mean, I think that it, it aside from John Carpenter's, I think it competes for the best directed of any of the movies. I think the cinematography is awesome. I think that it definitely has the best Myers aside from Nick Castle. And I said in, in the stream, too, if James Jude Courtney gets a chance to come back, which I'm sure he will, he's yeah. got a damn good chance at surpassing Nick Castle for me. Oh, yeah. I thought the kills were great. I thought that as far as acting, Jamie Lee Curtis was great. I think I prefer the version of her character more in H2O because it's, it's, it's a little exaggerated for me. Yeah, that that she's that hung up on one night forty years later to where it encompasses her thoughts twenty four seven, but yeah. uh, it's still an interesting direction. But because um, we've problems... been ignored the second film as well, let's not forget. Like, yeah, and that would if, make more if, sense if, if, if it's that, two if that full second nights. film was still in continuity. I could maybe get on board with how far she's gone, but she's literally like, yeah. It, it, just the events from the first film in which she was really only kind of affected at the at the tail end admittedly her friends died but it's like yeah. i just yeah i feel it's a bit too much going all sarah connor for for that one night and <laughs> why would she stay in haddonfield if she was that affected too by the way like yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i think that's just for the story they got they want to keep it in haddonfield so but you, you could totally buy her leaving town though yeah for sure yeah, but there was just there was a lot of characters in that movie that felt like they were absolutely inconsequential to the movie. Like they could have been removed completely, and they were only there to set up something small that happens later on. Yeah. Like the whole thing with the boyfriend. Like we have an entire scene in the diner or the the dinner where they're talking about the costumes and the mm-hmm. dance, and they're setting that whole thing up. And then you get to the dance and. They're, you know, they have the little love triangle thing, and then they introduce out of nowhere that apparently he has a drinking problem. Like <laughs> seconds later, he throws her phone into this fuck what CP calls Mayo Chup. Just yeah. all <laughs> that, that entire character is only invented to get her out of the party without a phone. And yeah. it, it's it's little things like that. Even Doctor Sartain, which is a love or hate thing. Yeah, that's Doctor Sartain. That whole character. that whole thing and that whole twist, which to me is one of the worst parts of the movie, where the way they execute that twist. Yeah. He only exists to explain why the bus got pulled over and to explain why it was cool to bring in the mask and set everybody off, which how he even got the mask in the first place. We won't even get into that. But <laughs> you, the, then you have the whole, I mean, there's so many things in the movie that just feel like really amateur script writing. Perfect and, coincidence. And, 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 the biggest, and the biggest part of that, too, is the humor. Because to me, aside from a couple of scenes here and there, and I, again, I don't know if it was Danny McBride because there's multiple script writers, but some of the humor does feel like McBride oh, humor. So I kind of I lean towards that. It just it feels like it does not belong in the movie, and it just totally it slams the brakes on the tone of the movie so many times where it's just like, what what is that doing here? And, and then everyone seems to ending, love that kid that's in it. And for me, it was just like, no, the tones just suddenly shifted into like, yeah, yeah, typical the biggest, Danny McBride territory so yeah and and all those mixed elements that you know like i would be loving the movie and then something would happen and it would be like a brick in the face and it was like i would lose my momentum of loving it and then i'm like oh that was weird and then mm-hmm. you get to the dr sartain and that was like totally slamming on the brakes then you get to that badass third act and the ending for me it's still it just seems like such a terrible ending for the movie because everything that they're trying to do with this being the final confrontation you know, this is they build it as that the final confrontation between Laurie Strode and Michael Myers, and then you get to the end, and it's like they don't have the balls to fully go there because they don't want to kill Myers, they don't want to do H two O again, where they have to either write themselves out of it or start anew with a completely different timeline. But it just feels like the ending doesn't have enough punch. Like you lock him in this basement, obviously he's going to get out somehow. So. Now you three drive away. Nobody dies. There's no like weight to the end. There's no like sacrifice. There's no like character arc that kind of gets wrapped up there or anything that like makes any kind of weight to the character of Laurie Strode. So what are we going to do in the next movie? We're just going to do the same thing again. 
There's no way that they're I don't see any possible way that they can continue this movie and not just have it be the exact same thing that they were trying this movie to be. But again, if you just get rid of Laurie Strode altogether, everybody's going to be like, where the fuck's Laurie Strode? That makes no sense. Why? Who are these people? But if you bring Laurie Strode back, it just makes the entire victory of this movie, what they're going for, inconsequential. Now she's got to fight them again. Um, uh, Jill? Or they'll end up doing a resurrection and kill her off in the first ten minutes. Yeah, yeah you know, or that. They kind of wrote themselves into a corner where you might be presented with something like that. Say, like, are they really going to do that mistake again? Mm-hmm. Um, just to mention about the characters, though, because you know we were just talking about the Friday the Thirteenth remaking characters, and there's been other. When just looking at this in terms of just a straight up slasher movie, let's don't dig deep and dig into the plot. Let's just say, okay, let's just pretend this is just a straight up slasher movie. How many slasher movies have characters that we don't really give? They're there for the killer to just kill off. And we really don't get that upset about these characters just getting killed off because it's kind of fun. It's part of the... It's kind of interesting to me that this movie, people really get bent out of shape over characters that are really, at the end of the day, there for Myers to kill. <laughs> yeah, but there's there's this like map that Myers they- from... From Myers to Strode, that like there's this perfect coincidence that that he follows this this line from character to character that like literally well, they take Michael Myers to Laurie Strode. It's just yeah like, yeah. I mean, Ugh. I think Sartain is there for that too. Like he because he's so obsessed with Myers that he ends up leading Myers to because he wants um he wants Myers and Laurie Strode to actually you know can have a confrontation with each other. He's like obsessed with it, so. He kind of and how he gets his mask is a little. That is the one thing See, that I don't. I like Sartain as a character. I thought he was an interesting uh, addition to the franchise, but I didn't like that he put that mask on. That I, oh, I no, I'm, I'm that. talking about how Michael gets the mask. Like like that was that was. Well, I, I could I buy that. I mean, it's going to be sitting in an evidence room for 40 years. Maybe the guy had a connection, you know. Uh, and was able to get the mask. I mean, whatever you got to write. I've only thing. seen it. I've only seen it once. How how did Michael Myers get to that fucking gas station again? He saw them at the cemetery yeah. at Judith's grave and followed oh, them to the gas station. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But building off what Lee was commenting on about like the throwaway characters and just people there to be killed, um, we didn't even get that with the boyfriend though. Yeah, like he, he was literally kind of was there thread. for the smallest wanna... plot point, so, and but... technically, he, the the friend, the third wheel, could have been completely eliminated and just had the boyfriend follow her through that backyard. Mm. Like it, at least give us something stands, with that guy. It stands out more in this movie because they're achieving so much that most slashers fuck up continuously to the point where it's like you're getting all this stuff incredibly right. That we've gotten wrong for so many years, but you're making the dumbest mistakes with your script mm-hmm. and your characters to where it stands out so much more. Mistakes like that in Friday the 13th Part 3 don't really stand out that much. But when you got a movie like Halloween 2018 where there's so much artistically there's going on. To it, yeah. Yes, yes. It's achieving so much that the shitty shit is so, like, the scale is just widened so much that it yeah. stands out like sore thumbs to me. I guess to me, for it me, just for counts me, the for character something. of Sartain, we should have we should have known right off the bat what he was doing. I think that the first ten minutes of the film should have been devoted to to his clinical stuff going on with Myers, his interactions with Myers, and it should have been him who gave Myers the mask and then sent and, and then yeah. sent him on his way. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's it. We can cut through all that nonsense. We can just get straight to Myers heading to Haddonfield. And, and Laurie doing all the business with her family. It's just like they, they, they play all these tricks to ca- try and keep this uh, twist that's eventually coming a secret, but they do it to such a degree that when it is eventually revealed, it feels like it comes from nowhere. Yeah, and, and like, you get it for 10 seconds before mm, then he's wiped. Yeah. It's, no, it makes no sense. <laughs> that is filler, like, to the T. That's all that that was. That's all he was. They could have explained, like, the two, three different plot points that he was supposed to drive forward. They could have explained that so many better ways and completely eliminated that character or at least just had him be another victim of Myers without the extra story. 
I'll make this comparison too, because I think the movie we all had anticipation so much for this being like really like Laurie's swan song, so we wanted a lot of focus on Laurie. When you have characters like that, every single time they took the focus away from Laurie, it irritated you to the point where like an H two O, and I know Lee's probably not going to agree with this, Brian might. When they take the focus away from Laurie and H two O, and we follow the kids in that movie, you got Michelle Williams, you got Josh Hartnett. Those characters to me feel in line with kind of how the characters were in the first Halloween. There's a flow to them. They don't feel like they're, I mean, they're cannon fodder to a degree, but there's, there's story, there's characters there, there's movement. When you get to these characters, they're there to drive this little plot point forward. And then they're gone from the movie. And and it's just, it's different. I much preferred Allison to, to the, to the characters in H2O. I I like the granddaughter. I thought Allison felt more um, authentic. I, guess. I actually give a toss about those characters in H2O. And when they do eventually go, when um, Laurie, get, Laurie gets them out and they, they go, they do a runner, I actually feel relieved. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm at a point where, excellent, she's got, she's got them out. She's a, if, if, she, if she dies right now, she's still achieved that aim of, of saving those kids. Um, so... I'm ready then. I'm ready for the final act for her showdown with Myers. Yeah, I want um, a, a showdown with Alice, Allison in the next movie with Myers. I don't want it to be a showdown between Lori. I'm done with Lori. Well, that, that's fine. To me, they could have set themselves up beautifully for that if they had just altered this ending a little bit. Yeah. All three of the Strode women surviving and having the big, you know, mm-hmm. hooray, me too, we got rid of the fucking evil man moment. It just feels so, it feels like, it was so forced to send a message that it kind of compromised a much better ending. Like you could have had, I, I know I don't like Judy Greer's character, so it's easy for me to say yeah. you could have had Judy Greer have God. like the whole character arc thing where she has to sacrifice herself. And she finally comes to the realization. My mom was right all these years. Now I have to be the one to save her or Lori Strode. Lori Strode has been right this whole time. She's got to hold Myers down so that they can shut the fucking gate on him. Anything could have set up the second movie to where, Lori still had this huge victory. She still had this huge swan song. And now we have somebody else we can follow in the next movie without it feeling like a forced sequel, like every bad sequel in Halloween has set themselves up to do. Yeah, and you're but adding instead, weight to, to whatever character dynamic. You you kill one of them. You're adding something to the dynamic there. Yes, yeah. exactly. Say as well, I agree with Mark, that. I think Mark, they should have killed one of them. Mark Walling says that we're being way too harsh on the new movie. But the, the thing is, when when... It's ranked number five. <laughs> I know. It, it, yeah, exactly. One, it's ranked number five. But two, when when the reaction to it is so overwhelmingly positive to the point where people are saying it's like the best horror film of the year, the best slasher in twenty years, and it's better like, than the original. Better than the yeah. Some people yeah, say, I didn't say that. The but it's like it is I, my I'm, number I'm one of the year. Kidding, though. but it's it's not even it's not even the best horror film of this year. I can think of at least two that I know three that are better than it. Well, I'm uh, fanboying out, so I, I can't. I don't really count. <laughs> I, I'm a Halloween fanatic, so it did everything it's, for it's me. Just, it, it's it's that reaction. I think this degree of critical talking about it is a reaction to yeah. that. People level get heated about this no movie. No critical thinking like, whatsoever. People don't you, get heated about watch, the burning. But they, for some reason, there's something about this movie that brings something out it, of people. It's exactly, it, it's weird. It's exactly what Brian just said, though. It's because it, 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 the, the overwhelming noise around all of us is perfection, 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 perfection. And when you see that, even though you agree with everything that it was great, Myers was great, this was great, the directing was great, great movie. Even when you agree with all that, when you hear perfection to a deafening level, it makes you want to point out like even louder, like, no, this was wrong. This was wrong. This could have been better. This was fucking terrible. Like, even though I still like the movie, like that's that's exactly what Brian's saying. It makes you want to scream even louder, like, shut up. It's not fucking perfect. Like <laughs> just because you want something to be true doesn't make it true. It's like, you know, I. I, I went into as, as, as a big Batman fan. I, you know, I loved Tim Burton's Batman movies in the in the late eighties, early nineties. I went into Batman and Robin hoping it was going to be as good, but it, mm-hmm. it. I can't tell myself that it was. You know, I can't. I can't make all these. And, I can't put the is, blinkers wait, on. Wait, 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 Brian. This, Brian, what's the score for Justice League again? <laughs> <laughs> but this is the funny thing too. Like, why is it? 
<laughs> Why is it that when the movie is new, because there's excitement around it, like yeah. you're not allowed, like you shouldn't say anything negative about it. Like you're an asshole if you point out any flaws. Well, that's but if one... I talk about, but if I talk about Halloween Five, it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> because, yeah, because Halloween Five was thirty years ago, so people don't care anymore. But yeah, I think I think as a whole, I mean, we're talking about three franchises here. There's so much pressure on this movie. For for all of our sake, for Freddy fans, uh, Jason fans, yeah. Michael's fans, like because we've we've been this is the longest we've been without any of these three movies. It's been what eight years since uh, the Elm Street remake. So there's like this we we're, we're kind of hungry. There's there's, there's a thirst yeah. and like there's so much pressure on this this movie to be accepted and and uh, to to spawn off this this next spring of movies. Like pressure that, that, on both sides too. Like right, there's right. people that love it are passionate. People that have problems with it are passionate. Mm-hmm. I don't, and, and it's because it's new, and it's because there's a lot riding on it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you don't like see that with Hellfest and you know movies like that. It, but there's something about this movie that just really riles people up. And the one thing I want to state is that even though I gave it a glowing, glowing review, it really made me sad the reaction that people like Cody and Lindsay, who stated their issues with the movie. And still gave it a decent rating, but they were just freaking, you know, raked across the coals, the, and, and and just really ugly, nasty things were said. Oh, and and their Lindsay defense, still gets though, it. I yeah. asked for it. I asked for it, but that was because I was just like, I'm so fucking sick well, and tired of it. So yours if you guys was a reaction bitch, too. Then so go for it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's interesting. You know, it, it. I hate that a movie that people love or people have it brings out ugliness in others you know just because of uh, opinion yeah. it's it's weird it was it was flat out like disgusting for like the first three days yeah. like it, it lessened as the days went on but like the first three days like i almost wanted to, to like delete youtube for a while mm-hmm. like it was yeah. bad like just seeing some of the comments on cody's video like it bothered me like throughout like the weekend like I wasn't even gonna make a video on it, and yeah. just seeing all of that shit, I was just like, no, 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 nobody talks to Cody like that but me. This is just <laughs> <laughs> too much. So yeah, no, I. Everybody kept saying that Cody was being nitpicky, and I don't think that he was whatsoever. I think that a lot of his issues were valid issues that a lot of people saw. They just don't happen to have YouTube channels, and so they saying nitpicky so i was like all right let's is, let's do nitpicky have then. those you, you can have those issues and still really like the film this yeah, is i the still thing. gave it like it's not like just because you point out that the film isn't perfect you don't really like yeah. it i've put it in my number five you know position but i still really liked it yeah, I cody even it. opened up his review with all the positives like and he was giving yeah. some glowing positives for like the first half of his I gave review. Him- I gave like eleven minutes of positives. Yeah, <laughs> I gave more positives than most reviews, yeah. like length. Mm-hmm. You stated one line at the beginning of this of your review where you were like, "Okay, guys, I have some major problems with this movie, but eleven minutes worth of great stuff that I'm about to give you. So hold on, because it's going to be fun." And then after that, you went into. But I, I'm wondering if it's that one little tag that people were like. Oh no no fuck you Cody you no you know you well, screw a lot of it was, most of those people didn't even see it too they were just yeah, like, yeah I mean a lot of the shit that I the most shit that I got was literally I dropped my video as the first showing in the U S was getting out yeah like it was like around nine p.m. that Thursday night so most of the people in the U S that were seeing it for the first time were walking out as my review was dropping so all the shit that was getting thrown at me for the first hour I knew at least ninety percent of it was people that just they read that they they heard the the line where I say my ultimate uh, or my my emotion walking out of this movie is and then I pause and I said disappointment. They said pause. Fuck you. Blah, blah, kill blah, blah, kill blah. yourself. Your mother's a whore. Like it's just yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the Viz pretty much summed it up. Part of proper reviews is being nitpicky. People say you're being nitpicky, you're, but I mean, isn't that kind of the point of reviewing? Uh, you know, to say hey, these are little problems of the movie. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. It's just an opinion. And yeah, it's so only, where was that it's, portion it's, in your video, Lee? It's not. It's, like not it. <laughs> it's not. It's not to tear down the movie either. Like I said this too. Like when you give criticism to a movie, not that David Gordon Green is watching my channel by any means, but when you give criticism to a movie, it's to make sure that 
those mistakes aren't repeated. It's to make sure that when we get Halloween in 2020, it's better. I like what Nightmare Maven just said. The toxic fans ruined the movie for me a bit. And to me, that is just the saddest yeah. thing. If this it, if this it, is a movie that I could almost, have been better for her. I guess the Star Wars fans were, were had nothing to do with this. The this Dark Knight movie. Rises. Remember when the first reviews came out yeah. for that? People were getting death threats already because how dare you not like this movie that I haven't seen yet? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. I I almost did not watch it the second time. Like I I planned it ahead of time. I watched it like that Wednesday night. I was gonna go see it a second time Friday, and I was gonna put up my spoiler review on Saturday. I didn't see it for the second time until Sunday, and I almost didn't at all because it, like the 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 fandom, the toxicity around it almost wanted me to just like okay, I don't want to talk about Halloween for the next year. You know what I mean? So it was it it, it was rough. Is Brian asleep? <laughs> He might yeah, be. Nah. Yeah. All right, number four. Uh, number, <laughs> four, four number four is Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. One that of was the best six. freaking sequels I've ever seen. Freaking that was my number six. One of my favorite slashers ever. Freaking love part four. Yeah. Top four. Go Top ahead and put four. it in the old computer, because I freaking do I, love it. Do I say what it was on my list? <laughs> yeah. Because it's kind of jumping the shark here. <laughs> it was number one. On my list. I, I hey. respect that. I completely respect that. Number, number 15 on mine. Number oh, 15. Brian. Yeah, fuck you, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Ted White, White is awesome. Yeah, the, kills, the kills are brutal. The movie has a really dark yeah. tone to I it. I don't know why you have a problem it, with it, Bri, because you like 2009, and it's basically... Like, there's almost like carbon it. copies of the characters no, from like 2009 it. in Everything. Everything from fi- number, my number 15 upwards, I like them all. I like the final yeah. chapter. Um, okay. out, out of all the, the Friday the 13th movies, it's my fourth favorite. That's, so I've got... Mm-hmm. If, That's if not very good. <laughs> if, if I'm just ranking the Friday the 13th, I've got the remake, number one. Got uh, Jason Lives, at number two. Freddy vs. Jason, at number three, just because of the, how fun it is. And then part four oh. is number four. So. Mm-hmm. That machete going into the side of his head as he falls down on the floor oh and my slides God, up. Magic. That is one of the greatest kills mm. I've ever seen on screen. Magic. Final chapter two, it, when you watch the first four movies, it feels like a huge spike in director talent. Oh, when you get yeah. From, Joseph Zito. When you go to four. Joseph Zito yeah. was amazing. Joseph Zito knows what he's doing. Or he knows what he's, what he's doing, doing. yeah. Mm. Pat, Pat four was the first film in that franchise where I actually stopped and, and started looking at the visuals. As more than just, you know, more than for what was just in the frame with regards to kills and whatnot. But actually, you know what? Director's trying to do something here on a visual level yeah, that is a bit, yeah. bit more above what the other films in this. It contract. opens with a jib shot for fuck's sake. We, I don't think we've seen that in the series yet. Yeah, fucking, yeah. Ooh, we got a crane down. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> They're moving the camera. And talk about characters. Totally I think Part Four has the best characters out of the whole franchise. Like yeah. Axel at the beginning. Uh, oh, hilarious! Axel's like so funny. Loved him. Then you got Crispin Glover and his buddy Ted, and they're they're freaking doing the computer thing. And fuck, yeah, I think they because they partitioned their characters together, and I think they all these partitions kind of played off of each other, and I think that's why it works so much. They it was very organized and structured, uh, really good well, script. Yeah. They're the same types of characters we get in all these movies, but they're just a lot more enjoyable in this one. So even if so even the ones that even the ones that are literally there just to get naked and get stabbed, you, you still just kind of enjoy being around them more than mm. I did in part one or part two. Sam, or, yeah, and it's one of those that Sam like it has the most lines that you can remember. Like, want to give old Teddy Bear a kiss? <laughs> I, mean, there, I can I can rattle off like ten lines from the movie just thinking about it. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and there is no computer. There is no computer. Uh, number three, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, part three. My part three. Oh shit! <laughs> My number one. Dream Warriors is number five for me. Number eight. I think. Oh, number three is five for me. Uh, yeah. Dream Warriors is number five for me. Yeah. Oh, wow! Dream All Warriors three of us at five. Look by at by a fucking country mile, that is the movie in this list that I watched the most. Um. Dying. Not just for the Freddy movies, but just period. Like even Halloween. Halloween's a yearly staple, but Dream Warriors I pop in like every couple months. Like it's just, it's the Freddy movie to me that it, even though it is has that comedic edge to it, and I definitely would prefer the Freddy in Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. 
Um, that movie just has the full package because it's still got the scary dark tones. It's still got the great demented kills, and the the humor is dark and demented. It's not meant to be cheesy. Um, it's him fucking with his victims because he's gotten powerful to the point now where he's like unstoppable and he's having fun with it. Um, visually, the Dawkins soundtrack. I think that the Dream Warriors cast, like the the kids. I actually prefer them to the kids in the original. I think they're the most fun of uh, any of the Nightmare on Elm Street I agree children. with that. I agree with that. Um, I like the whole angle about bringing back Nancy in a great way and bringing back her father and letting her father kind of oh, take John part Saxon. in the... Yeah, that having her father kind of... Saxon is amazing. ...make Saxon's up for his sins of the past and kind of come and... They both have to kind of team up and sacrifice themselves <gasps> to rid Freddy, obviously not permanently, but... As we're losing Brian, guys. Okay. We are we are legit losing Brian. <laughs> He's really falling asleep. <laughs> I, I think Morning, he was gone sweetie. there for a good 30 seconds. That's awesome. You want some oatmeal? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's let's just go this on to the, the next first. one. <laughs> number two is the first nightmare on Elm Street. I had it at number three. That's I a, had it at number two. I had number, it at number three, I think. Or four. Um, Let me see, hold on. Yeah, I had it at number four. Number two. Number- Nightmare on Elm Street, there's not much more you can say about it. The only thing that holds it back for me is like the last eight minutes. Yes. Enough said. Yes. Yeah, that pulling the doll through the door. God, why am I agreeing with you today, Cody? Uh-huh. I don't know. It's weird. must be a full moon. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, number one, uh, Halloween eh. 1978, yawn. Do we, yeah, do we need to say anything? About- <laughs> that was my number three. The best made I think movie. It, yeah, I think it, if we were all being objective, I said this when I did my video too, if we were all being objective and we were just going off of like technically what's the best, I think Halloween would be number one on all of our lists. But as far mm-hmm. as like... It, uh, maybe. Technically, yes. Yes, technically. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's not the one that I watch the most. So that's mm-hmm. why I got bumped to number two. It's the mm-hmm. YouTube Horror Reviewer Starter Pack. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what Halloween? I mean, Everybody say anything. Is Halloween. It's like there's nothing more to say about Halloween. You can't say anything. Else. <laughs> <laughs> I got my Halloween review. Got my coat. Oh. Yeah, All right, now let's move on to Killer Flicks topics. <laughs> oh my god! I know. <laughs> Brian, there's only four hours left, Brian. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to this. We can we can brief this really quickly though the only thing that i do want to get everybody's opinion on because it's kind of the hot thing right now is the the chucky remake so yeah i'm going to bed i liked that uh that that poster <laughs> with buddy yeah that had me that intrigued me so, i like so the fact I, that it looks like they're going back they're going dark they're going straight slasher movie and they're going in some different yeah. directions they're going to have a cast of kids, not just Andy. I think they're doing enough different with it, which is the only fucking thing you should do with a remake. Don't just go beat for beat what they did in 1980. Um, they're, it, yeah, I'm for it. Yeah, I'm t- yeah. After seeing that poster, I'm totally for it. I'm not. I'm trying not to keep any expectations for it because, yeah. like, we've been hurt previously. It's, it's going I'm, against I'm right story with, four. I'm right. Yeah, it, 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 that's awesome. Isn't to that me. great? Yeah. That makes me want to see it even more. Good it's toys and irony. bad toys. Yeah. Going against each yeah. other. That, that'll be a double feature day for me, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still haven't seen Toy Story 3. <gasps> wow. Damn. I watched, oh. I watched it yesterday. What? Oh. Poor Mom reason. life. <laughs> I heard it's sad. So. Yeah. yeah. The best of the three. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love the first two. I don't know why I didn't watch the third, but yeah. It's, I mean, it's well. That's your next drum dums watches. <laughs> no, that would be Monster oh, House. Man. I fucking love All Monster right. House. That's a good one. All right, we can give mercy to Brian okay. and wrap it up, I guess. <laughs> All right, um, real quick, Cody, what you got? Or actually, I'll go to Lindsay first. Lindsay, what you got? Anything planned coming up? Scream stream. <laughs> okay. Yeah. When's our next scream stream? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Lindsay. Okay. Mer. Mer. Cody? Uh, I'll finally be coming back this weekend after my long little hiatus there, but uh, I'm going to have We Need to Talk About Kevin. Um, I got uh, Overlord I'm going to be reviewing because I watched that and enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah. Um, oh, Creed, Creed 2 is coming oh. out next week. I'll definitely have a review and a new ranking for that. 
um, I got a lot of patron requests, so it's going to be a lot of patron focused shit mm-hmm. in between some of the new releases for the foreseeable future. All right, CP. Um, health permitting. Yeah. Uh, the the thirty one on thirty one video should be. Should oh yeah. Be, should be in time for Thanksgiving. I just need to re- like I have like bookends. I just need to drop my shit in, which is the important part, I guess. Uh. I just, every time I think I'm okay, uh, my body says, no, 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 we're, we're going to feel like shit and you have to go back to the hospital. So, uh, can I, 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 I don't know. Can I just say too, that I think CP is one of the most underrated editors I've ever seen. I, mean, mm-hmm. I am. I, I'm. I, oh, hundred percent. When I, I get jealous when I look at CP's editing, I'm like, I don't know how he did that. I can't do that. Um, yeah. it's, it's amazing. amazing. I mean, who have all these like flash effects and shit going to? It's just crazy. So I can't yeah, wait. I to I'm over here with my Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so I can't wait till CP gets back in the saddle and starts turning out some content. Because man, I I want to see some more Savage Cinema. I'm looking forward to yeah. that. Yeah, uh, I'm doing. Uh, so so I guess I'll, I'll give the the rundown of what's coming up. It, it's it's the 31 and 31, uh, a Serbian film. Which <laughs> why do you put hell. yourself through so much torture? Dude, I don't know. I don't know why. Somebody brought up like, why don't you do movies that nobody wants to watch? I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. And <laughs> here I am, four movies in. I'm like, this is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's that. Okay. Brian, besides sleep, what do you got coming <laughs> up? Uh so I'm I'm gonna finish <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. I'm going to finish off the Psycho series. So I've, I've reviewed one and two. Um, I've, oh. I've fil- filmed my review for Psycho 3. I love uh, Psycho 3. I need to do Psycho 4. Um, and I'm also going to be doing the... I, a lot of people don't know, but there was a made-for-TV movie called Bates Motel, not to be confused with the series. Oh, wow. Um, I'll do that as well. Um, and then, yeah, that, that's it. So that's... that's I've got that plus whatever text for fancy at the time, I guess. But uh, yeah. cool, man, Brian. I I feel so bad when, <laughs> and I had to start like freaking twenty minutes late because of my. Uh, but yeah, and we're almost running what two and a half hours on this one, so we're um, pretty steady with the viewers too. Pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the first scream stream that we passed three hundred views uh, at a time. So thank you for that. That was freaking awesome. Um, I just dropped Rocky five. I'm going to be doing Rocky Balboa before Creed two. Then I'm going to do a ranking for that. Uh, some more patron reviews and who knows what else. Um, but, uh, thank you all. I hope you guys have a great Thursday night and, uh, I hope everybody has a great weekend. So toodles, everybody. Oh, edible plant, uh, panty flavor, please. Uh, CP black cherry. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, you